Denver, Colorado, as we kick off yet another day in the Super Bowl of Livestock shows. And this year, we honoring the uh, year of the yards. Before we begin with the official introductions of our National Roll of Excellence Charlet show and our American Keenina Junior Keenina show, would everyone please rise, remove cover, and let's pay tribute to this nation in which we live, and especially honor those men and women that are serving around the globe for our freedoms at this very moment. The national anthem be sung by Miss Leanne Rhymes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's where we start here in the State Arena every day of the Super Bowl Livestock Shows. Without further ado, we'll bring in our two class to start off in each show. Junior Keating, a show. It'll be class 736, two entries. Our judge on that side, Parker Hindley from Champaign, Illinois. Tell you more about him as we move through the show. And over on the National Roll of Excellence Charlet Show, our first class will be 101 Summer Heifer Cabs. Our judge on that side of the show ring, Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma.
Well, good morning, and it's uh, going to be a, a fun day over here judging these Charlets. Uh, we start off the day with a single-entry September calf, uh, I assume maybe still on the cow, uh, but a really stout, powerful female. We'll see how she stacks up with the rest of these class winners in this division here in just a minute, but a really powerful female to start our show this morning. Well, again, good morning here from the Stadium Arena, and it's certainly going to be a fun day, uh, and I'm looking forward to it because you never know when it's going to be your last time getting a judge here on the Hill. A good first class to start with. The young ladies have her up here in the front uh, is going to be the class winner, and I think in terms of feet and leg structure, she has an advantage. They have her set back a little better in her knee and takes a longer stride out of her front end. Plus, she just gives you a little higher quality look from the profile. A really moderate and stout made heifer in second, a good shape up high. I wish that one was a little better in her front knee and front foot placement. She wants to get a little turned down. Plus, I'd set her tail head down into her ever so slightly there. But definitely a moderate, good shaped one there in second. Good class to start off. We're going to have a fun day. Catch up on results here as class 737 comes in for the junior Kidina show. Here's a result on 736. First place, 457, TTBR Foxy, 111F, 1CA, Colburn Primo, Katrina Swope, Anahawk, Texas. Second, 456, SCPCC J. Lee. And it's Wyatt Brown to come to Oklahoma. As I mentioned in the ring, next class, 737. In the junior early heifer calf division, up next will be the division championship. Over on the uh, Charlay side. With our judge, Kyle Conley of Sulphur, Oklahoma, will be class 102, late spring heifer calves. These born May 1st through May 30th, 2018. Result on class 101, first place 2842, Miss Prairie Cove, 856 FET, Winter Springs Farm, LLC, Molshoe, Texas. Over on the uh, Charlay side, Kyle Conley, our judge, fourth generation registered Angus breeder, graduate of Oklahoma State University. His wife, Amanda, and his two boys, Luke, Case, and Jack, are here for the show. Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma, on the Charlay side. Over on the other side of the show ring for our Keenina Junior Show. Parker Henley is our judge from Champaign, Illinois. Graduate of Butler Community College. Got his bachelor's from K-State. His master's from University of Illinois. And he's working on his Ph.D. currently. Grew up on a purebred Charlay and Angus cow calf operation is the coach of the livestock judging team at the University of Illinois. Once again, our judge for the Junior Keenina Show is Parker Henley, Champaign, Illinois. Also helping us today on the Charlay side is our 2019 Miss Charlay USA, Madison Vogt. She's from Marysville, Kansas, and attends Kansas State University, majoring in ag economics. Madison is very excited to serve the breed this year. Thank you, Madison, for helping us again today. Also on the Charlay side, I want to recognize Executive Vice President Neil Orth, staff members David Hobbs, Caitlin Chisholm, Floyd Wampler, Cody Beck, Weston Geppert, and Ty Groshans. And junior board members assisting us today, Kylie Ramirez and Tara Tillefson. 
AICA President Larry Ludicky is here today. Board members Ty Eschenbaum, Mike Shoemaker, Dennis Metzger, past president Bill Notke. And helping us on the Keatina Junior Show, Cheyenne Kaiser, 14 years old. She's the Keatina Princess. She's from Morning View, Kentucky. Thank you, Cheyenne, for helping us today. Also, as we get started here today, we'd like to thank our state arena sponsors. They include Andis. You can watch renowned Andis livestock grooming educator Kirk Steerwalt demonstrate cattle fitting in the Beef Palace Auction Arena. Kirk will explain the latest techniques to get award-winning results from your Andis tools. Check your schedule for dates and times. Also want to thank our friends at Showbloom for sponsoring all the Hill and Yards open breeding cattle back tags at the National Western. Champions don't just show up, they win with Showbloom. We will big thank you to our friends at Purina as well for sponsoring all the webcasting and our renowned Media Scholar program. You can watch every show live or watch the archives from past shows at nationalwestern.com. Purina, feed greatness. We get right into the thick of it with a, a really good class here uh, in our second female class. Uh, two, two to three heifers up here on the top end, I think, are truly in contention in this class. But from there, I think this heifer that leads off uh, just really has some advantages in terms of balance. When you get on the profile of this class, uh, this female definitely has the most extension up through her front end. She's the most laid in in her shoulder and still has the most softness of middle uh, from her forerib back to her flank. A uh, very sound moving, really attractive, uh, really, really correct heifer here to lead off. I really like the heifer in second in terms of width. She's really thick topped and bold sprung, a really nice cow prospect, a little more moderate sized, uh, which doesn't bother me. I just like to see her a tick more extended up through her front end as you compare her to our class winner, but two really good females. The heifer here in third, love her length of body, very, very similar to those two heifers. I'd like to see this heifer just a notch level from hooks to pins. She wants to roll her hip a little bit as she moves, and that's where I'd change that heifer, uh, but a really nice feminine heifer there in third. Our fourth and fifth place heifers are both really stout and powerful, and they're wide base. They have lots of foot and bone. They're maybe just not a soft middle. They're a little coarser about their shoulder as you compare them to those top three. The next two heifers that come are heifers that probably just need more time as you compare them to the, the class. They're young. They're a little bit more green in their condition today. I uh, just need a little bit more time, but a very, very good class. Well, a very interesting class here uh, in class two on the key show, and uh, we have about every different shape and size and kind uh, that you could ask for. And, and so I'll just try to talk about these top uh, four, which I think are close in my opinion. Uh, first things, I'm not sure there's a big structure sort on these four. All of them probably have one or so areas uh, that I'd probably change them a little bit. And so when I made that call, I think this heifer right here, in terms of her maturity pattern, her condition is, is the most ideal. I like this one's length of neck and the way it sets up out of the top side of her shoulder. I think her condition right now is really ideal. I think that one's got a very big foot, a nice shape from behind, and a high quality look. Now, I think the, the length and levelness of her hip could be changed she could probably reach a little further off of her rear skeleton there uh, but you know I think it's okay and I don't think there's a structural upgrade in my opinion and so that one's look and quality and freshness wins out. The next effort here is very different from the maybe even 
in any of the first three, and she's a little smoother, she's longer hip, uh, she's leveler there, and with that comes some more refinement in terms of her foot and her bone and her muscle shape and her substance. Uh, I like this one, though, in terms of just uh, uh, having a maternal and brood cow look to her. Uh, that's great, and that's why she moved up the lineup. I didn't call her perfect structured and took her all the way. I think her angle to her shoulder is a little more forward, and at times she wants to not set down as comfortably on her back pastern and wants to waggle it and just uh, is not secure there. So today I didn't think there was a big upgrade there to give up that much shape, but I think that's going to be a great cow. The next two are close, and they look the same. Uh, they're, they're really hairy. They're presented uh, awesome. They've got a lot of substance. They've got a lot of dimension. These two cattle just look a little earlier in their maturity pattern. They've got more condition on them than I probably like. I'd like to lengthen her out up to her front end and her cannon bone, uh, but she's definitely a powerful stout one. Maybe just relax her in her spine as well there to say she's perfect moving. Same goes for this heifer, highly presented, stout, powerful, gets up in her spine. The next heifer here is really deep bodied and big bone. She's got a little too much condition on her. She doesn't hold the top side of her shoulder together. Another different looking heifer that's long and extended, uh, really fresh in her condition. I'd probably just tone her down in terms of her frame size, give her a little more depth of body, maybe set her down on her back pasture in there, but a very still a nice heifer with some growth and extension and muscle. Congratulations, good class. Catch us up on results here. Back over on the Charlay side. In the ring is class 103A, early spring heifer calves. Here's the results on 102. First place, 2661, JFR Fancy, Braxton Filippo, Rush Springs, Oklahoma. Second, 2660, CAGTR Secret, 8680FET, Cagney, Effling, Highmore, South Dakota. And third, 2657, WC Abigail, 8161PET, JVS Cattle Company, Sulphur, Louisiana. And fourth, 2837, Val Libby, 201, Caitlin Davlin, El Campo, Texas. Fifth, 2655, MDCC, Miss Who's Hop, 8641. Caitlin Brown, Canyon, Texas. 6 2841, KLLR Sugar, 13F, Winter Springs Farm, LLC, Malshu, Texas. 7 2652, Magic Mountain Jenny, Melanie Moonstra, Oreo, Aurora, Oregon. In your programs, the placings for class 102 are as follows 7, 5, 3, scratch, 1, 4. Top of the next page, 2, 6. Once again in the ring, class 103A, early spring heifer calves. These born April 2nd through April 23rd, 2018. Our judge on that side of the show ring, Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma. And we'll double check the results on class 737 and get those to you here in just a moment. Our judge on that side for the Keenina Junior Show, Parker Henley, Champaign, Illinois. In the ring, first and seconds for the early junior heifer calf division championship. There's results on 737. I'll work these in real quick here for the Junior Keenan Show. First place, 466, Candy, Julia Fry, Johnstown, Colorado. Second, 467, Josie's Ace, Josie Wilkins, Lamar, Arkansas. Third, 460, Daddy's Favorite, Lad Landgraf, Medill, Oklahoma. Fourth, 464, Steck Dunk, Miley, Dawson Minor, Bondurant, Iowa. Fifth, 469, Mrs. Felicity, Katrina Swope, Texas. Sixth, 468, Cheese. Kendon McAllister, Green Forest, Arkansas. On your program, the placings for 737 are three, scratch, four, scratch, one, two, six, five. Well, a nice first division here and, uh, you know, some differences uh, as you'd expect in these calves and lots of different kinds and shapes. Uh, we got some nice cattle out here that got look and freshness of condition to them. Uh, so I really appreciate that. The one that stands out and just has a high quality look is going to be the young ladies out of the second class here. She'll be our champion. Give her a nice round of applause. Early junior heifer calf division champion 466, Candy. Julia Fry, Johnstown, Colorado. That moves 467 in consideration for reserve.
Reserve early junior heifer camp champion comes out of the 736 class, that is 457. Foxy, Katrina Swope, Texas. Up next, we move to class 738 on the Junior Kenina Show. 738. Another really good class here in our uh, number three class. Uh, we just have a heifer that leads this off that just a really nice combination female in terms of her performance, her balance, her structure. Uh, she just really uh, striking out here. Uh, but I think what really gives her an advantage is the way this female travels off both ends. Just really long, three striding kind of heifer and really, really smooth as you study her from the side. There's a little bit of difference between uh, these two and first and second in terms of size, but uh, this heifer's not too big by any means, but just a little more frame and extension in this heifer that wins the class. Our uh, second place heifer to me is the most unique heifer in this bunch. I love her standing still and probably wins this class standing still for me. Uh, I like her size and her extra width she has. She's a little more uh, compact in terms of her, her length, but uh, really a neat package in this heifer. I like her head and neck and the way she blends together. She little, has a little extra foot size and bone, uh, but when she gets on the move, I'd like to just free her up on those rear legs and see her move out a little better uh, for, for me today. Uh, a really sm a pair of really smooth, attractive heifers here next. This heifer just simply needs more thickness to her, no, needs more base width to get up any higher in this class, but really attractive in her look. I like the performance and the added size this heifer has coming next. She's really deep-sided and big-ribbed. I just like to level her from hooks to pins. As she travels, she wants to drop her pins, and that's where I'd change her. Uh, this heifer coming next, a nice pair on the bottom end of this class, but this heifer's got more width and thickness than the heifer that follows her. I like her added power. I uh, just need to see her a little uh, more relaxed in that top line today. She's wanting to roach her top and maybe not show the best, but the heifer follows smooth and attractive. She's sound. I just like to see her thicker and wider as she moves away from you, just a little bit flatter than I'd prefer. Nice class, so all the way through. Back over on the Charlet side, here are the results for class 103A as 103B comes in the ring next. 103A results, first place 2843, TR Miss Fifi, 8741 FET, Madison Vaught, McLaugh, Kansas. Second, 2672, BRCHE, HFCS, Dottie May, 8526, Brigston Steve Birchge from South Dakota. Third, 2662, CCBS Cardi, B, 8258 ETP, Haley Schwicky from Gibbon, Minnesota. Fourth, 2671, TR Miss Felix, 8909 FET, Thomas Ranch, Herald, South Dakota. Fifth, 2667, AWR Patsy Klein, 823, Aces Wild Ranch, LLC, Weatherford, Texas. Sixth, 2665, TR Miss Faith, 8707 FET, Brixton Steve Birchke from Oneida, South Dakota. Placings for Class 103A in your programs are as follows. Three, one, six, scratch, five, scratch. Top of the next page, four, two. In the ring, Class 103B, early spring heifer calves, born March 12th through March 29th, 2018. Our judge, once again, Kyle Conley from Sulphur, Oklahoma, on that side of the show ring.
Well, this uh, is a very good class over here, and uh, this top pair of heifers definitely had me think, and, and I want to tell you what I see here, uh, and I think there's some just differences in how their structure is laid on them, and honestly, if I could combine or somewhere get half or middle or between uh, their rear skeleton, somewhere in between that, uh, I think would be ideal, uh, and so we'll get to that in a second. This heifer here wins this class. Uh, because she is so unique in, in terms of where her chest sets up into her and then to still have that kind of awesome rib shape and substance from behind. I think she's very unique uh, in that aspect. Her neck's high out of her shoulder. She's still smooth made and very maternal. Now she's too frail at the ground and I think she's got extra set to her hind leg and it's not as big and secure as probably ideal. Uh, but she still gets out and covers her track and has a very unique look. Now, this heifer coming next is definitely bigger footed and the hind leg is probably a neater to look at at first glance. I call it just a little too straight. When she gets out and travels, I think she sets her hock down just a little too hard and just a little too quick. In my opinion, I'd probably lengthen her out of her hip, give her a little more set to her hind leg, but this heifer definitely has that advantage in terms of foot and bone and probably real muscle up high. I called structure a wash. I thought the first one was a little better brood cow. The next heifer here in, set, in third is a different kind as well. She's really fresh, she's refined, she's awesome in her head and her neck. Uh, and honestly, I always give this kind a chance. Uh, just in this class, those first two just had so much more right now and are still high quality. I think this one's a big time bred. Her neck comes up out of her shoulder, she's long and level out of her hip. The young lady does an awesome job showing her. Uh, just couldn't go any higher today. You ran out of power. I'd probably moderate her a shot too. This heifer coming next. I know uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are fans of her. Lots of foot and bone. She's presented amazing. That one gets a little short in her step and a little straight in her shoulder. She wants to work up in her spine and I think I call her a little quicker in her maturity pattern for me, but I can see definitely how someone really likes that one. Another heifer that's really long necked and refined. She's long strided. I wish she was just more relaxed in the center of her spine uh, to just say she was comfortable enough in terms of her structure to move on up. A real big bone, stout, powerful, good shaped heifer comes next here. She gets up in her tail head and is a little coarser for me, but definitely lots of muscle. Congratulations, good class, a good pair to discuss on top end. We got a really good class over here and we got a really good place to start. A very dominant heifer in this bunch in terms of her performance and just overall type and kind. Uh, extremely wide based and bold ribbed female. Love the depth of length that heifer has. She balances up extremely well from the side and gets out and travels uh, really, really good off both ends. Just a really impressive female to start this class. Uh, the next uh, uh, placings I, I can see doing some different things, but I think this heifer logically ends up in second. She's balanced, uh, she's sound, and she most closely follows the type of our class winner in terms of her rib uh, design and, and depth and body. Uh, just a really, really nice female here in second. A really correct, smooth made heifer in third. She's just going to give up a little bit of width and power as you study her compared to those top two. She's really nice in that shoulder. She just doesn't have that uh, big rib cage and, and capacity that those two in front of her have. A heifer that I like in four, uh, she's wide and heavy boned, uh, but she gets a little bit coarse and kind of matches that bone work with that head and neck. She has a little bit rounder look to her shoulder and a little bit crestier over top of her neck, but a powerful, uh, very, very high performing female in fourth. A nice, smooth, attractive heifer here that comes next. I just like to give her more heart and more flank. She's made really good from the side. When she bodies down and, and gets that rib dropped, she'll be really competitive in this bunch. A really smooth, attractive heifer. She's by far the narrowest gauged in this class, but she's really, really smooth and attractive from the side. Just needs more power to get up any higher. And a heifer that's very functional in her kind here, but just lacks the balance and eye appeal of the ones in front of her, but a really strong class with a really good class winner. Trying to catch you up in results here. First of all, Junior Keenina show. Results on class 738, first place 488. Who's watching? Katie Mize, Indiana. Second, 487, who? Dat Steiner, Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. In third, Coy Charlotte, Hadley Dunklau, Wayne, Nebraska. Fourth, 479, Fergie, Samantha Schrag, Marion, South Dakota. And in fifth, five, it's 485, that is Miss 5F, 
At the Dunk Cloud, Wayne, Nebraska, 6'478, Miss Chanel. Kaya Hendrickson, Montana. In the ring on that side for the Junior Keenina Show is class 739. After this class will be the late Junior Heifer Division Championship. Parker Henley is our judge from Champaign, Illinois. Trying to work through the results on our Charlet side. Coming to the ring is class 103C, early spring heifer calves. First result on 103B, first place 2677. Miss Outsider Bunny. Jeff's Cattle Company, Stephenville, Texas. In second, 2674, Miss Faye. Paisley Grace Carlson, Harrisburg, South Dakota. Third, 2676, Miss Sister B Bevan, Thomas Ranch, Charlotte, South Dakota. Fourth, 2675, Miss Flora, Dillon Borg, Concord, Nebraska. Fifth place, 2684, Cool Girl, Ethan Prop, Adair, Oklahoma. Sixth, 2680, Gemma, Katie Utech, Hubbard, Nebraska. Seventh, 2678, Showgirl, McClure Farms, Gibson City, Illinois. In your programs, the placings are two, four, three, one, seven, six, scratch five. In the ring, 103C, early spring heifer calves on the Charlet side. Well, just a pair of heifers here, and I think a very close comparison. Uh, and, you know, you could definitely go back and forth. Uh, this heifer, I thought, won because she's a little smoother in terms of her shoulder. And when she first came in the ring was definitely uh, holding her spine just a little more correct and had a little more length to stride. There's a little more heifer in the one in second here. Uh, she's a little bigger footed and a little bolder. I uh, wish that one's shoulder laid into her forerib a little neater there. And then in motion, she wants to really get a little tight in her spine and a little quick in her step, uh, maybe off her rear two there but definitely a big stout powerful one that went second congratulations there's results on the junior kidina side for class 739 first place 495 who that that is reese richardson arapa oklahoma second place 501 taylor's tamale taylor dorsey eaton colorado in the ring first and seconds from classes 738 and 739, late junior heifer calf division championship with your judge Parker Henley from Champaign, Illinois. Well, another very good division here, and uh, you know this uh, calf classes. I guess these calf classes uh, have offered lots of different shapes and sizes, and uh, differences in terms of structure. And you know, I think uh, maybe we could land somewhere between on a few of them, uh, but I still think there's some very unique pieces. Uh, I won't talk long here. Uh, those. That pair of heifers out of the first class in this division, I think, uh, although they're not very similar uh, by any means, and we talked about their structure a little bit, I think they both have a, a lot of uniqueness and uh, a lot of things that are very, very hard to make and really hard to breed. And so they'll be our champion in reserve. Congratulate those bo both those young ladies. Late junior heifer calf champion comes out of class 738. That is Who's Watching? Katie Mize, North Manchie, Indiana. The reserve comes from class 739. That's 495. Who that? Reese Richardson, Arapaho, Oklahoma. Another good class, but uh, most importantly, we got a really uh, easy place to start here for me. Really a balanced heifer. Love the rib cage, and this and this female. She definitely has the advantage in terms of body and capacity, overall rib design. But a really nice fronted, nice headed heifer that gets out and travels, moves really smooth and, and uh, very correctly on the 
on the travel. The heifer in second, maybe a tick more moderate sized and that's uh, just fine, but she maybe doesn't hold her top line together quite as nicely as our class winner. She's thick and has some power to her and I don't see this heifer being quite as far along as our class winner. But I think there's a lot of future here in this second place female and a really good female to go along with it. Uh, the heifer in third, uh, just a nice uh, designed uh, cow prospect here that's got a little bit of throat and a little bit of chest up here in, in front of her, but a female that's definitely got some width and power, and you see some uh, brood cow look here, a nice designed female. A really correct heifer that is very, very smooth from the side, and you appreciate that. She just uh, gets out power in terms of rib and body, just needs more heart and flank in this class to be more competitive. A stout, powerful, big boned heifer next with a lot of hair uh, coming here. A female that's just a little coarse over the top of her neck and shoulder. Uh, as you can see as she travels, she pushes forward a little bit that shoulder and it sure sticks out in this class. Uh, two females next that uh, maybe just get out balanced and maybe get out prettied a little bit, but they're wide and thick and heavy boned and have plenty of muscle, just need to be a little more feminine, a little more maternal in their look. Move into a little older heifer here, one that you really have to appreciate in terms of rib shape and, and moderation. A very powerful heifer that's got some skeletal width and, and dimension up high. You know, maybe uh, I'd give her a little different head shape uh, and make her a little more refined there, uh, but still one that's got some value and some usefulness to her. Congratulations. Let's go back and correct myself on the junior, late junior heifer calf. Your reserve was the second place in the first class. That was Jay Sol, who's that Steiner? Sarah Sullivan Dunlap, Iowa. My apologies, I heard wrong. In the ring next was a single entry class 740. Seven forty, first place 505, M Fuss, Dilly Dilly, Jenna Streeter, Shawnee, Oklahoma. Coming to the ring next for the Junior Key Show, 741. Second class in this senior heifer calf division. So after this will be the division championship. Back over on the Charlet side in the ring, this will be a spring calf division championship. Going back to our results on class 103C, first place 2694, Miss Fiona, Kelton Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Second, 2693, Miss Fran. Cagney Effling, Highmore, South Dakota. Third, 2697, Bullard, Teresa. And that is Mentink, Lapke, Partnership, Logan, Iowa. Fourth, 2688, Miss Francis, Brigston, Steve, Birchke from South Dakota. Fifth, 2689, Miss Felicity, Heinrich Farms, Nebraska. Sixth, 2687, Rachel, Alex, Elliot, McClure, Gibson City, Illinois. Seventh, 2690, Miss Prairie Cove. Winter Springs Farm, LLC, Molshoe, Texas. In your programs of placings for 103C on the Charlet side, six, four, five, seven, scratch, scratch. Top of the next page, two, one, scratch, three. First and seconds back in the ring. This will be our first division championship for the Charlet show. Spring calf division championship. Judge, once again, Kyle Conley from Silver, Oklahoma. We end up with a really good lineup of class winners out here for our first division. Our first uh, class was a single entry uh, fall calf, a uh, powerful, thick made female. Maybe doesn't quite uh, match up out here, but sure appreciate the thickness and, and stoutness that heifer has. Our uh, next class winner, really angular, very feminine from the side. She's really laid in smooth in her shoulder. She's deep sided, uh, very, very correct in her structure as you get her back out here. 
another really, really correct heifer that wins our second class. Uh, she's smooth and pretty up through that front. She has a really flat angular shoulder in her. Uh, maybe doesn't quite have the rib depth today that some of these others have, but a, a very, very uh, correct female. Love her length and levelness from hooks to pins and has a really correct uh, hind leg set. Uh, the last two class winners, I think, match up in terms of their power and their performance. Uh, they're both wide-based. They both have a lot of rib. Uh, they're both uh, just tremendous from the side. They both are, move out really, really nice. Uh, I think uh, you, you look at them two heifers, and you just got to decide where your priorities are. Uh, maybe our last class winner has a little more length and extension. I think our uh, second to last class winner here has a little bit more rib and expansion uh, underneath. Uh, Really nice division here. Let's give these breeders and exhibitors a quick round of applause and we'll go select our two divisions. Well, a nice class here and four heifers uh, that, again, have some variation. Uh, these top pair of uh, slicker-haired heifers, I think, come up to the top because they're just a little better structured. Uh, this female here, I think, is so refined and attractive in her head and her neck. Got a beautiful maternal uh, rib shape to her. Uh, just the right condition in the way I like them. Uh, so just good brood cow prospect that's long strided and comfortable uh, and still got a high quality look. She could be stoutened up in terms of her foot size, give her a little more heel there, uh, but that's a minor deal. The next heifer, uh, it, coming next is really good in her hip and hind leg, and I probably call it the best of the class, and I love that. Uh, she's so long strided. That one's still got uh, a, a shallow chest and a neat look from the side. She just doesn't have near as much in this class, and, and when compared to that class winner, she needs more four ribs. She needs more depth of body and just performance, but from a feet and leg structure standpoint, I could see her argued as first. The next heifer, very striking, very refined and smooth shouldered, has a uh, great presentation today. Uh, when you get her stopped, I think uh, she definitely looks like a class winner. She gets a little short in her step from behind. She wants to hock in. She's just not as comfortable and as long stride and secure off her rear two, uh, but still a very, very good animal. Congratulations, you've done a nice job. Same goes for this next heifer here. Presentation's awesome. This young lady's doing a stellar job. Uh, and when you do get this heifer stopped, I, I think there's no question she's the, you guys thought she could win a class. I think in this tough d class, she gets a little straight in her shoulder. She wants to come up in her spine and just not as uh, comfortable or balanced in motion. But a very good class. Congratulations to all those exhibitors. Catches up on results here. Let's go back over to the division championship on the Charlay side. Spring calf champion was 2677. LJR Miss Outsider Bunny 77F. Jeff's Cattle Company, Stephenville, Texas. The reserve spring calf champion was 2694. TR Miss Viona 8910 FET. Kelton Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma. We move to the junior calf division in the ring with our judge, Kyle Conley of Sulphur, Oklahoma. His class 104A junior heifer calves. These born, looks like January 1st through February 12th, 2018. This is also your junior calf division championship. As we keep moving along in the key show here, uh, just two classes. Uh, again, uh, I think there's a pair of heifers that suit me really well in terms of, uh, you know, their, their maturity pattern, uh, their, their female qualities and look and, and condition. Uh, and specifically, that's the first and second out of that second class, the young lady here in the middle. She'll have our champion, young man here, super sticking. You'll be reserved. Congratulations. Class of three here, uh, maybe not just a dominant female in here, but I think the heifer that leads off just has to in terms of her combination, in terms of structure, 
performance and muscle. She, she sure stands out in this bunch. Uh, could be a little bit prettier through her front, a little bit softer middle, but a female that sure stands out in terms of just being the combination heifer in this trio. The heifer here next, I think performance alone gets her into second. Uh, there's such a difference between uh, the next two. Uh, the, the thickness and the added performance sure gets her up above our third place heifer. Our third place heifer is probably as balanced as anything in this class, but she just gives up too much size and performance and weight per day of age to get uh, up any higher in this group. Uh, nice three heifers here. Let's start with the stoutest, highest performing female. Well, as we uh, keep plugging along here, the young lady's got her class winner at the National Western, so congratulations to her. Uh, this heifer's got a lot of rib and moderation and fleshing ability to her, uh, and yet she's still fairly comfortable in terms of her structure, uh, so I don't know how anybody could uh, really be too critical uh, of a good cow like this. You know, the only thing is maybe she could be a little neater in terms of her chest and her her and maybe give her a little more length up front. Uh, but good body, good moving, good brood cow there. Congratulations. We'll get you count up on results in just a moment. Here's a result on class 104A junior calf. That first class of two, my apologies. First class of two, first place 2709, Rachel Alex, 805, Elliot McClure, Gibson City, Illinois. Second 2706, WDZ JLS Miss Comfort, 805 PLD, Austin George, Wisconsin. Third 2708, Princess Jackie, Tyler Shaw, Kimball, Nebraska. In the ring, this is class 104B, our second class of the junior calf division, just in front of the division championship. These are born January 1st through January 24, 2018. Catch up on the Junior Key Show. Got to go back to class 741, first of all. Results on that one, first place, 508, riding in style, Brooklyn Curtain, Oxford, Iowa. Second was 509, Bucky's Dream, Wyatt Dunclow, Wayne, Nebraska. Third, 511, Jude Stylin. Ashlyn Ruff, Athens, Alabama. Fourth, 510. Jude Stylish Lady, that is Ryan Carlson, Julesburg, Colorado. So it's scratch one, two, four, three. Your senior heifer calf division championship was 508, Ride in Style, Brooklyn Curtain, Iowa. The reserve 509, Bucky's Dream, Wyatt Dunclow, Wayne, Nebraska, both from the same class. That last class, single entry 742, first place 512, Violet, Claudia Albrecht, Fostoria, Michigan. In the ring, this is class 743. Judge once again is Parker Henley from Champaign, Illinois on the Junior Key Show.
We'll go ahead and talk here, uh, you know, just a pair of heifers and, and again, lots of differences and shapes. Uh, I think this heifer that wins, the predominantly black heifer, is a little longer and more extended about her head and her neck. She's laid in a little neater in her shoulder. And specifically why I think she wins is she's a little leveler and has a, a little more length to her hip. Uh, so very nice maternal female that moves uh, pretty comfortably, even though I'd probably change her rear hoof structure and maybe how she sets down there. A more moderate and bolder made heifer is in second. Uh, I like that about her. Um, to me, this heifer's got a little extra shoulder. I'd maybe just make her a little longer uh, and smoother about her hip and her hind leg there. She wants to get just a little short and travel outside of herself. But a congratulations, nice pair of females. On the Junior Key side, here's the results on Class 743 real quick. First place, 518, Miss Veronica, Trevor Borman, Iowa. Second was a ride in your program, 516, Mercedes, Erica Garcia, Las Lunas, New Mexico, 514 and 517 were scratches. Coming to the ring, summer yearling heifer division championship with our judge from Champaign, Illinois, Parker Henley. Really got a good class, but on the on the top end here, these uh, top two sure stand out in my opinion as far as overall quality. Uh, a lot of differences between this pair, but uh, if, uh, if if you like that heifer in second, uh, I, I would give you a full range there. She's she's awfully good. But this heifer that wins the class uh, obviously follows the type that uh, we picked in the last division in terms of being bigger bodied. Uh, she's probably as compared to the second place heifer, a little more ready for today in terms of condition, which might be to her disadvantage down the road. But a female that's very sound, she's wider underneath today, she's got more depth, uh, she's maybe just a little bit chunkier as you get right behind her, uh, but obviously she comes in a more moderate package. So if, uh, if that's the big difference there, uh, she needs to win the class uh, for me. This heifer in second uh, really just ain't really anything wrong with her. Uh, she's really, really smooth from the side. Uh, she's really long bodied. She's as sound as anything we've seen today. And if you're gonna bet on one down the road, I could see uh, this one just being unbelievable this time next year. She's so pretty about her head. She'd like to see her a touch softer to get her up. This heifer in third, a uh, tremendous cow prospect. She's not as long necked and not as flashy as the first two in this class, but she's definitely sound and bold sprung and deep ribbed. I'm gonna make a tremendous cow. I think a really high quality female. 
really stout, powerful female. And four, she's really heavy boned, really bold sprung. Maybe just wants to get a little bit coarse and a little bit plain about her head and neck as you compare to those top three females. Just show you a little more quality and a little more feminine look up through their front ends as compared to her. The next heifer in line, smooth and attractive, just gives up the overall capacity and body volume of those four in front of her. Uh, she's a good, high quality female, just need to see more spring and base width in that female. The next two heifers uh, that came in just a little late, uh, a real cow prospect here that's uh, uh, next, uh, big rib, soft mate, easy keeping female, just wants to get a little plain and a little coarse through her front end. Heifer in the end of the class, long, thick, and extended, just doesn't have the rib and body of some of these better heifers, but a really strong class and a very, very high quality top pair. Keeping female, just wants to get a little plain and a little coarse through her front end. Well, a very interesting uh, division on, on my side here in our summers and May uh, division. Uh, you know, and a pair of heifers that each one, their class, I guess all three of them that we have left out here are, are all uh, very different. I've made that comment a few times, uh, but it's the truth. And uh, I'll just tell you what I see a little bit. The heifer up in the front, uh, if I'm going to use her, I'm going to prioritize her, her rib shape, her depth of body, uh, the fact that uh, she's got nice feet and she is, you know, uh, comfortable enough in her structure. She's not uh, perfect out of her front end uh, and maybe could be a little looser, uh, but uh, be deep bodied, easy fleshing kind of a brood cow there for sure. The one out of the second class, I definitely, in terms of look and balance at the stand, uh, I definitely want to be uh, more in line with this heifer right here. Uh, I think this is a quality look. Uh, she's very, very striking, uh, presented awesome. The young man does a good job showing. Now, as a, as a cow breeder, I think there's a few things that just bug me a little bit about her, and so I, I'm trying to prioritize and work through that in my mind. I'd probably just change how her teats are set in there. Her utter floor is uh, really unlevel, and her teats are gathered, and then the shape to her rear feet uh, and how she sets down there bugs me a little bit. But I keep coming back and saying that this striking look here from the profile uh, is very hard to pass up on. So this is why it's a challenging decision, um, you know, and you got to weigh out things. And as a show judge, you got to know what you're okay with leaving here. Uh, and so in my estimation, I'll side with the one with a little more uh, brood cow fundamentals out of the first class. She'll be our champion. Congratulations. As we get our division back out here, uh, I think we've got a nice uh, – for some heifers here, but I think instead of going through them, I'm just going to be real forward. The two out of our last class obviously need to stay together in this division just in terms of quality, so the young man, he'll be champion in a second to that heifer will follow, but a really good pair of females. Catch up on results here, the Junior Key Show at Summer Yearling Heifer Division Championship. First place was out of the first class, 512. Men Violet, 122 EET. Claudia Albrecht, Fostoria, Michigan. The reserve comes from class 743. That's 518. Miss Veronica, Trevor Borman, Algona, Iowa. Up next to the ring will be our first of three classes in the Junior Yearling Heifer Division. It'll be class 744 with our Judge Parker Henley from Champaign, Illinois. Back over on the Charlet side, results on class 104B and the results of that Junior Calf Division Championship. First place in the class and your champion 27-27, Boy Bree, Ken Kelton Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Second reserve, 27-15, Miss Faith, Bailey Garwood, Columbiana, Ohio. Third in the class, third is 27-29, TR Miss Outsider, Tate Berg, Florence, South Dakota. Fourth. 
27-14, Miss Daly. Auden Charley Ranch, South Dakota. Fifth, 27-20, Miss Outsider. McGuire Roar, Elbert, Colorado. Sixth, 27-30, Miss Prairie Cove. Winter Spring Farms, Winter Springs Farm, LLC, Molshu, Texas. 27-31 is seventh, Miss Prairie Cove. Winter Springs Farm, LLC, Molshu, Texas. Program placings for Class 104B and that division championship are as follows. Four, two in reserve, scratch, five, scratch, one in champion, scratch, three, six, seven. Move to the senior calf division. On the Charlotte side, this will be Class 105. First of two classes in the winter heifer calf and senior calf division. Judge on that side, once again, Kyle Conley, sold for Oklahoma. A really good top pair of heifers, uh, but to me it uh, sorts itself out just in terms of structure and looseness uh, on this heifer that wins the class. Uh, just gets out and travels uh, a lot freer off that front end and, and probably even off the rear leg as well. Uh, she's smooth and real angular in that shoulder uh, and a little bit more feminine featured through that front end. I love this heifer standing in second in terms of when she stopped, uh, really wide based. She has more foot size and bone. She's thicker topped and thicker hipped, uh, but a heifer that has more trouble in that shoulder and front leg today than I'd prefer, but uh, I just see that as the biggest difference between that pair. Our third place heifer is stout, wide based, really bold sprung kind of a heifer, uh, but I, she wants to round and get a little short from hooks to pins as you compare her to the top two in this class. Uh, really powerful female though, and nice group of heifers here in this late fall class. Real quick results on the Class 105 for the Charlotte Senior Heifer Calf, Winter Heifer Calf. First place, 23-27-33, Adriana, Madison Harrell, Carthage, Illinois. Second, 27-34, Miss Dari, Charlie Johnson, Orlando, Oklahoma. Third, 27-32, DFCRG, Mandy, 014E, Riley Durr, Milan, Illinois. In the ring next, Class 106, and they will have the division championship. Well, another very good class here, and I think this one just falls together uh, very straightforward, in my opinion. Uh, this heifer that leads off, I think, uh, you know, of the first three highly presented heifers, this one's in a different league in terms of uh, female quality about her head and her neck uh, and how smooth she is, and so I appreciate that about her. Now, I like this one's hip and hind leg structure. I think it's uh, pretty good, and she's got lots of body. Uh, you know, maybe the, the thing that you see in her problem is that she comes up in her spine, and I think that's a result of her maybe just being a little forward in her shoulder there, uh, but I think her hind leg still works good. She's fresh. Uh, she's got a beautiful head and neck. Uh, and still very maternal. She'll be a good class winner there. The next heifer, I think, in terms of just length of stride at the ground, uh, she's probably uh, as good as anything in the class. She's got big feet. Uh, you know, lower joints are good. Now, I don't think she's just perfect there. She's up high. She wants to open up a little in her shoulder, get a little weaker in her top line, uh, but definitely a big-footed, long-strided, powerful made heifer. To win this class, you need to be more refined. You need to be a little neater in your shoulder and a little have a little more strength to your top line. The next heifer, uh, really deep bodied. Presentation's awesome. Uh, young lady does a great job showing her. She just doesn't want to get out of her front end there. She's a little straight. She's a little towed out. Uh, makes her uh, not hold herself together in motion. Uh, but big bodied, moderate, and easy flushing. Congratulations. Next pair of heifers are close. The black heifers just got better feet. That's why I prioritized her uh, up to fourth there. Long bodied, fresh condition. She needs more body. She needs more substance to move up. The, the uh, 
Smoke Colored Heifer coming next here is very powerful and, and big hipped and it's got lots of bone. Uh, just fix her front feet there. She's really curled over, make her move a little more comfortably. Congratulations, good class, very nice one to win. Single entry here before we pick our division champion. A really functional heifer here that's big ribbed and loose structured. She's really nice from the profile. Let's get her back in here with our other class winner here and see which one uh, uh, looks the best here, but really good female. Here's the results on Class 106 on the Charlotte side, Senior Heifercast. First place, 2738, Kyra Ann. That is Cammie Stahl, Brimfield, Illinois. Up next, Senior Calf Division Championship. First and seconds back in the ring with our Judge Kyle Conley in Sulphur, Oklahoma, for, or from Class 105 and 106. Back over on the Junior Key Show. In the ring, Class 745, single entry. Here is the results on 744. First place, 526, Ace. Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. Second, 520, Reese. Ashley Caldwell, Avery, Texas. Third, 525, Miss Me. Josie Wilkins, Lamar, Arkansas. Fourth, 535, Miss Amber. Mia Encinias from Moriarty, New Mexico. Fifth, 522, Certified Engagement. Alexandra Maholi from Peyton, Colorado. Program places are 25431. Let's go down to the ring with our Judge Parker Henley, Champaign, Illinois. Results on Class 745. Real quick, we've got a division out here. Uh, Parker's waiting for the mic. Uh, being just quick and straightforward, we're going to use the two out of the uh, first class in this division. I think the, the sounder heifer of that pair, really fresh in her condition, really gets out and travels, very feminine in her look, and our reserve will be this stouter maid, real powerful female that maybe didn't quite reach as well off her front end, but a really nice pair of heifers to, to go in this division. Well, just a single entry on my side, but uh, this young cowboy here has done a nice job presenting this heifer, uh, very fresh in just her presentation, her condition. Uh, I really like, even though she's maybe not just deep and swoopy back into her flank, I like how you've cut her out there. It really shows off her high quality udder, uh, very good in her spacing. Uh, it's gonna be a nice cow that's long strided, uh, very feminine. Now, uh, just to pick on her slightly, because I'm sure we'll, uh, the competition's gonna get it deep she could be a little uh, better in the angle to her shoulder and I might even moderate her in terms of where mature cow size is going to be uh, but a good cow there congratulations good job back over the division championship senior calf champion for the Charlay 2733 Adriana Madison Harrell Carthage Illinois Reserve 2734, Charlie Johnson, Orlando, Oklahoma. Up next, our first class of two in the intermediate division, late summer yearling females. Back over on the key side. Result on class 745, first place 529, Mexicali, Ryan Dolly Slugger from Dune, Iowa. Up next, the single entry class 746, just in front of our junior yearling heifer division championship. And after that, champion key female selection. This pair of August heifers comes to us. Uh, I'm gonna use the heifer that balances up a little better. Uh, it gets out and travels a little looser off both ends. More attractive in her look, because she's longer bodied and stouter made. The heifer in second, uh, just a functional female that is functional in terms of the way she gets out and travels on her feet and legs. She has added reach, and she's a little more moderate in her size, but a female that uh, just doesn't have the stoutness of our class winner. Over on the Charlay side, class 107 result for late summer evening females. First place, 2744, Tara's Joy. Tara Tellison, Warden, Washington. Second, 2742, Magic Mountain. Pat O'Dell, Melanie Boonstra, Colton, Oregon. Up next, three entries in class 108, summer evening females. Then our intermediate division championship.
Well, again, uh, you know, I was sitting there just a little bit thinking about uh, what I wanted to say. This heifer, uh, when you get way off the side of her, uh, is very, very intriguing. Um, you know, as a, as a kid or a, a young college student, you'd sit and you'd think about what they should look like. And, you know, I think uh, from the side, I think this one's very close to what they need to look like. You know, neck comes up out of her body really high, her shoulder really high. She's great big body uh, and still has a big and attractive hip and hind leg. And so I think uh, this thing does a lot of unique things, and yet you can definitely tell she's uh, putting a lot of, or developing an udder there. Got a nice teat placement. Uh, she's comfortable in structure. That's a very nice heifer that's awfully unique uh, to look at. Congratulations on your class winner. There's a result on class 746 on the Junior Key Show. 532 is first. Sassy J. Lynn, Sarah Sullivan Dunlap, Iowa. The two first place animals from 745 and 746, and the first and seconds from 744 back in the ring. This will be your Junior Yearling Heifer Division Championship. Up after that, Champion Keen, a female selection. Judge once again from Champaign, Illinois, Parker Henley. We've got a really good pair of heifers in this summer class uh, that start off with two heifers that really have some quality. Uh, both heifers are starting to make an udder. Um, I think you got to make a, the call here on the things that are important to you. And in Charlays, uh, not to say I'm an expert breeder by any means, but the things I kind of like to see in a really good Charlay heifer, I like to see those heads maybe just a little bit smaller and more refined and uh, maybe a little more feminine in their look. I think this heifer does. I think when you look at both udders that are starting to make underneath, this heifer maybe just a tick more refined today underneath, not to be nitpicky on them. But this heifer also has more thickness over her top and over through her hip. Uh, and just a really pretty feature of that heifer's front end and a little more muscle. This heifer gets out and goes just a little better. She reaches. He's shown cattle the last two days. I've judged and I haven't seen him show one yet that hasn't moved good. But this heifer's maybe just a tick flatter and shows a little bit more underneath her chin and through her chest. And that heifer that wins the class. This heifer is uh, also right in the same league in terms of quality. She's really thick and she's probably the stoutest one in the whole class, but she also maybe wants to get just a little coarse and a little bit, uh, maybe a little coarser about her head and maybe a little crusty over the top of her neck as you compare her to both heifers in front of her, but a really strong class here. Uh, really a good trio here. All, all three has some quality. Well, a good division here, and not many numbers as we kind of roll through it, uh, but definitely a lot of quality. Uh, again, you know, I've said this in all the divisions, uh, there are lots of different kinds here, no doubt about it, and uh, you, you could definitely, depending on what you like, prioritize something different. But I, I do want to highlight, uh, you know, each, uh, all three of these heifers that won their class, they're unique parts uh, because I think to keep a big bred heifer in this uh, kind of condition and, and presentation this long, you definitely want to hear about uh, your cow. So my compliments to you. Uh, the heifer out of the first class, uh, I like that one's uh, just uh, frame size or smoothness of shoulder. You got a very pretty and small and attractive head on her. I think that's great. Uh, I think a good body shape. Uh, she's long and level and correct in her hip and hind leg. I think a very good heifer there. We picked on her in class. You heard 
He may be a little out of her shoulder. Uh, that's maybe where I change her, uh, but I still like that one. I like this bald-faced heifer here too. Um, and, and so if you're okay with one that's a little bigger in terms of her frame, I'm not saying she outweighs the other ones, but I think that one is a big one's gonna be just, you know, plenty, plenty tall, uh, but that's a fresh, highly presented heifer with nice feet, a beautiful utter shape on her, a really long and level hip uh, as well. So I think that one's definitely in contention. You know, out of her shoulder and front end, she could be changed. And maybe uh, in this lineup, she doesn't look as just stout boned or massive or bold everywhere, uh, but a good cow. The one out of the third class, uh, very uh, unique and uh, has so many uh, intriguing pieces. Her neck is long, it's so high out of her shoulder, her lower body balance is in there nice. I appreciate as well that that one's coming into some milk there and has a nice uh, bag foreman. She's got big feet and she's got a lot of substance to her. Uh, I didn't really pick on her too much in class there. Uh, you know, the, the little things, maybe somebody just change her hoof, her hoof shape uh, ever so slightly and then maybe uh, uh, when, when she, she gets, gets going too fast, that one hind leg just, just comes up just a little short, uh, but she's probably that calf starting to wear on her a little bit inside of her. Uh, but good, high-quality heifer there. So uh, my compliments to these three class winners and definitely one even that was second or first class that has foot size and bone and, and substance to her. So three good heifers. You could use them uh, a lot of different ways and I could see people prioritizing different things, but this one's just too exotic looking right here today. She's going to be our champion. Congratulations. We've got a nice uh, summer division here in front of us. Uh, again, instead of describing the heifers again, uh, be brief, and I think it's pretty straightforward out here. Both these heifers out of our last class that uh, I think definitely have the most quality. They contrast each other enough, but they both are going to make excellent females and brood cows. So congratulations to both these guys. They have good heifers. On the Judah Key side, and the results on the Judah Yearling Heifer Division Championship, and also the result for Class 746. First place was 532, J. Sol Sassy, J. Lynn, Huda Band, Sarah Sullivan Dunlap, Iowa, and that was also your champion Judah Yearling Heifer. The reserve Judah Yearling Heifer comes from Class 744, that's 526, Ace, Sarah Sullivan Dunlap, Iowa. Up next, we did a champion Keenina female selection. With our judge, Parker Henley from Champaign, Illinois, our division champion reserves will be in the ring for that. Back over to the Charlotte side, here's the results on Class 108, and then we'll get to that division championship. Class 108, some yearling females, first place was 2750, Sweet Cakes. Lauren Bales, Bluffton, Indiana, and Buck Creek Ranch, Pawnee, Oklahoma. Second, 2748, Miss Elsa, Caleb Johnston, Hobbs, New Mexico. Third, 2747, Miss Timeless Lady, 716 PET, Caitlin Brown, Canyon, Texas. Double check the result on that division championship, the intermediate division. We'll double check the champ reserve on that. Got a really nice pair of heifers here in this this class, and uh, it's uh, just how they come in is how they're going to stay. Uh, this young man's got a really nice cow prospect here, uh, as we talked earlier about some of the things that uh, make uh, good Charlotte cattle to me. A really feminine head on her. She goes into an extremely deep forerib and flank, uh, and gets out and travels just fine. A really wide-based female. A lot of capacity and a lot of width underneath there. Uh, just, a, just a ton of good in that heifer. I have nothing to take away from 
a, a good female here. This second place has her extremely attractive from the side. She's probably even uh, a little bit more feminine and refined about her front end, uh, but a female that uh, maybe just doesn't have that base width and capacity that our class winner has. She's long, longer bodied and leveler, uh, longer hipped and maybe just a notch leveler hipped, but uh, a female that I just don't see the power and overall capacity and dimension in, but two really good females, just a lot of differences here, but a really, really high quality female to win the class. Go back and check that intermediate champion female, 2750 was your intermediate champion. That is Sweet Cakes, Lauren Bales, Bluffton, Indiana, Buck Creek Ranch, Pawnee, Oklahoma on the Charlay side. The reserve was 2748, the second in that same class, 108. 2748, Miss Elsa, Caleb Johnston, Hobbs, New Mexico. Result in that last class, 109. Late spring yearning females on the Charlay side. First place, 2752, Miss Just a Startin. That is Kelton Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Second, 2753, Miss Risling, Riley Durer from Milan, Illinois. Up next, class 110, the second and final class in the junior camp champion female division. Class 110, early spring yearning females. Awesome pair of heifers out here in this class. Uh, uh, both of them are going to make tremendous cows. But from there, uh, the difference is this heifer that wins the class uh, maybe just balances up a shot better. Uh, very impressive in terms of her body capacity. I really like how angular and flat she is in her shoulder. She goes long up through her front end. Uh, obviously, she carries a little bit underneath her chin and, and through her chest, which doesn't bother me uh, for as sound and powerful uh, as she is, showing a nice bag underneath. Uh, maybe if you get real nitpicky uh, about condition, you could say she's maybe just a tick uh, over, overdone, but uh, she hides it well and blends it well. I think that's an awfully good cow prospect. The same goes for this second place heifer. She's maybe a touch shorter body, a touch more moderate in terms of her size, but she's wide and sound uh, and just a tremendous rib cage in that heifer. She might even have an advantage in muscle if you really want to get uh, critical on the, the comparison there, but this heifer just has a little bit of chest and brisket in her. Uh, just needs to be leaned up as well if you get uh, critical on her, but two really good cow prospects in first and second. Up next, junior champion female for the Charlay. Here's the results on class 110. Early spring league females, first place, 2759. Boy, smoking money, 7311. Carter Hogue, Good Hope, Illinois. Second, 2762. Brandy, Trisha Dyball from Newcastle, Nebraska. Once again, up next, junior champion female selection with our Judge Cal Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Let's go down to the ring and get the results on our grand champion drive for the Keys. This is Parker Henley, Champaign, Illinois. Well, what a very fun morning for me, uh, and uh, definitely about the only thing that could have uh, cheered me up after Kansas City's loss last night was being able to judge on the hill here at Denver. And so I'm glad I was fortunate enough, even though we lost, uh, to have this excitement here, and it, it has been fun. Uh, with that... Um, I definitely want to say thanks uh, to the National Western and the whole crew, uh, the, the Key uh, Association, 
and the board there for selecting me. It's an honor, uh, as well as just uh, family and my wife uh, who's sitting over here watching the Charlotte. Read, uh, which is definitely, uh, I thought it was maybe going to strain my attention, but definitely this show has worked me because there's been a lot of good stuff uh, that comes through here and a lot of tough decisions. So um, thank you to those people. It's been a lot of fun. And, you know, each one of these division winners that we've talked about here uh, throughout the day have some uniqueness to them. Uh, the first class division winner there, so long necked and striking and fresh condition. The second division here, I think, is uh, just unique, and there's very few of them that look like her in terms of her neck and her body shape. The next one here, so refined and feminine, love them like that. The next heifer is just a big bodied, stout made cow. And then the final uh, bred heifer division, one that's so exotic and unique and so hard to build, uh, won that, that particular division. So you have to be excited as breeders, uh, as fitters and feeders on the side there. Uh, there's some good cattle here. You guys have brought the, the very best to me, and I'm appreciative. Thank you. Uh, it's been a great show. I'll go show you the two I like. Give them a big round of applause. Your champion keating a female is 532 out of class 746 and your junior yearling division j soul sassy j lynn that is sarah sullivan dunlap iowa in this division i think it's pretty obvious we've got two really high quality females out here uh, i think there's some similarities but yet they they have enough differences it's worth talking about uh, the heifer that wins the first class uh, as we talked her she's extremely wide based she's got a ton of capacity underneath uh, lots of rib rib cage in that heifer uh, just uh, and the, 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 probably the biggest advantage between she would have between the pair in my mind is this heifer's probably fresher condition today uh, she's also a heifer that that maybe doesn't have the length of body that our second class winner has. Uh, she's probably got more muscle here in our first class winner than our second class winner. I think there's just a lot of give and take here. If I had to pick one that had a nicer head and skull on her, it's probably this heifer that wins the first class. Uh, this, uh, this female is just uh, awfully unique in her kind. She's moderate sized and, and just extremely impressive in terms of her rib cage. Now this young man with a second class winner here, she's a longer bodied, higher performing female that really, really gets out and travels nice on her feet and legs. Uh, you can see the udder development building underneath uh, and just a tremendous uh, quality in that heifer. As we talked to her negatives, she's maybe carrying just a little bit of chest floor and she's carrying just a little bit underneath her chin, which doesn't even hurt her balance, but it's just worth mentioning. It's pretty obvious. You can see that underneath there, under her chin and her chest floor. Uh, that heifer's condition does want to jump out at me just a little bit in terms of how uh, she's got just enough extra condition on her. Uh, not that either one of them are, are just super lean, but this heifer maybe doesn't, uh, doesn't hide it quite as well as our first class winner. Two really, really good heifers, and let's give these breeders and exhibitors a really good round of applause. A very, very competitive division here, and we'll go to select two champions. Back over on the Kenia side, while they take pictures, your reserve champion Kenia female was 526. Your grand and reserve grand match that junior yearling heifer division. 526 is BMW Ace 402 EET. That's Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. So Sarah takes both champion and reserve champion in that division. When they restart, it'll be class 301, late junior heifer calf and division championship. Back over on the Charlay side, your junior champion female was 27 and 52. That comes out of class 109, LJR Miss Justice Starton, 2376 EET, Kelton Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma. The reserve junior champion female 
is out of class 110. That's 27 and 59. Boy Smokin' Monty, 73-11. Carter Hogue from Good Hope, Illinois. In the ring at this time will be our senior division, class 111. We have two classes in this division. First class is 111. Junior yearling females, two entries. First of two classes. Judge once again, Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma. As they come in, they'll stay how they, they came in. Uh, this heifer that wins the class uh, really going to be a nice cow. She's a moderate size, big rib. She's easy on the move. Uh, just a really nice cow prospect. Going to be a low maintenance female uh, with lots of fleshing ability. Bigger framed, bigger outlined heifer in second. Uh, probably got more foot size and bone to go with it. Maybe just not quite as neat and feminine through her front end as the heifer that wins the class. And that's where I see the biggest uh, uh, difference in those pair. But uh, really nice nice cow prospect to win this class. Up next for the Charlay will be class 112, the second class of single entry, and then we'll have our division championship for senior female. The result on class 111, first place 2771, MLF Miss Montella, 53 EET. That's Bailey Garwood, Columbiana, Ohio. Second place 2772, White Rose, Pixie Proof, 704, Madeline Rohr, Albert, Colorado. Once again, coming to the ring, a single entry, class 112. J and J Angelina will be coming in the ring. So class 112 must be a scratch. So your senior champion female is 2771, Miss Montella, 53 EET, Bailey Garwood, Columbiana, Ohio. And then 2772 is your reserve, White Rose, Pixie Proof, 704, Madeline Rohr, Albert, Colorado. This should be the Cal-Calf pair, class 301, I believe, no? Is this? Okay, my apologies. Class 112 is in the ring. It's a single entry. My apologies. It's got a coupon in there. That had me thinking count calf. So, sorry. Scratch the senior division results that I gave you. They're wrong. Single entry cow calf pair here, and obviously, if anybody's ever shown a cow calf pair, uh, it's uh, it's a lot of work, and it's it's got to be worth doing, and uh, to, to justify even thinking about it. And obviously, this female is worth messing with because she's an impressive cow here, really a wide based female. I like this female's size. Uh, I like this female's look about her front end. She's feminine and maternal in her look. She's got a nice bag underneath. Got a nice little. Uh, 90 day old calf at her side, uh, but a, just a powerful female. It looks like she's gonna have a, a big time future as a cow, uh, but I really appreciate this female's size, stature, overall cow look, and just the maternal uh, feature that she has. Just a really nice pair, congratulations. Result on class 112, final class before the division championship. First place 2775, J&J Angelina, 660. Sydney Johnson, Orlando, Oklahoma. First and seconds back in the ring now from class 111, 112. Now we'll have the senior division female championship. Then the cow calf pair will be in next. Then we have the grand champion female selection following the cow calf pair class and division.
As our last division comes in, uh, our first class winner, we talked about how good she was going to be as a cow if she keeps up at this pace. Just a real moderate, big ribbed female. It's very sound and, and very correct up in her front end and re really got a good look to her uh, as a female, from a female standpoint. Our pair, uh, what a very powerful female that's uh, moderate sized, heavy boned, really, really correctly made and just an impressive female that you can tell is going to have a lot of future and a lot of use uh, as a cow. Now, let's give these exhibitors a nice round of applause, and I'll go select our senior and reserve senior champions, two, two really good females out here, I think. Senior champion female, 2775. Out of class 112, J&J Angelina, 660, Sydney Johnson, Orlando, Oklahoma. Reserve, 2771, MLF Miss Montella, 53 EET, Bailey Garwood, Columbiana, Ohio. Now we move to the cow-calf pair division. We have one class in the division. So this will be class 301, cow-calf, two entries. And they are champion cow-calf pair selection. After that, grand champion female selection. Over on the junior, or excuse me, the key show, new judge, Dr. Mark Hogue from Good Hope, Illinois. Tell you more about him as we move through the show. This will be the key Angus female show. First class is 301 that's in the ring. This also is your late junior heifer calf division championship. Judge once again, Dr. Mark Hogue from Good Hope, Illinois. Graduate of BAE, University of Illinois, Iowa State, with his master's, PhD at Michigan State. Grew up in a diversified livestock background, raising and showing livestock. Currently the professor at Western Illinois University. Once again, Dr. Mark Hogue, our judge on the Key Angus side of the show ring. Our judge on our Cal Calf Fair class, Cal Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Sure, like to welcome everyone to the Key Angus and Key Show uh, here at the National Western on the open show side of things. I think we've got a division that starts with three very high quality individuals as you describe them. Your division winner, in my opinion, is the most consistent in her views, both when she's on the stand and in motion in terms of angles and structure. I think a heifer calf that's got a really nice uh, shape to her neck. I think it sets appropriately on the front side of her shoulder. Then when she gets in motion, I think her spine and tail head and hock uh, may remain the most consistent. The youngest heifer we've got in class, I really like the greenness, the immaturity. I thought as it compared two and three in a close decision, I like her design and angles. I like to tone her tail head down in just a shade there in her hip at this stage in her maturity, but really a juvenile attractive green immature heifer calf with a bright future heifer in third wasn't wanting to show very good out here and she's probably got the body and performance advantage uh, within this class as we project her through her growth curve she's maybe a little more jammed up and plainer about her neck and shoulder shape then she'll tuck her hind leg up underneath herself just a little more inconsistently I think as she gets comfortable in the show ring I think she'll relax and settle in really a nice division to start our open key Angus division We've got two Charlotte pairs over here and just 
briefly, this heifer's gonna, this cow calf here is gonna win the class. She's just a leveler topped, more attractive outlined female with a heifer calf at side that gets your attention in terms of her balance and quality. Just a nice pair to start this, this class. The cow in second, not to take anything away from her. She's really productive in her look. She's got a nice calf at side. Maybe just doesn't show you the, the quality from uh, the side. The profile doesn't have the levelness of top line as our class winner and are maybe showing a little bit uh, less in terms of quality on the calf side to go with it, but a nice pair of cows that are extremely productive. Get the results here on the Charlay side for class 301 and your champion cow calf pair. First place in the class and champion 2778, Sandy. That is Tara Tellison, Warden Washington. Reserve and second in the class is 2779, Snowball. Pat O'Dell, Melanie Boonstra, Colton, Oregon. Up next to be the grand champion female selection with our judge, Kyle Conley of Sulphur, Oklahoma. Back over the other side, we'll go to our judge, Dr. Mark Hogue. Here we have an individual entry with a, a dynamic duo of showmen out here uh, working together as a team. This heifer comes in really with presence, got a nice look, a good design and structure in her. Like the size and shape to her foot and her foundation, I think she handles herself well. Good at this stage in her development in terms of condition, I think a high quality individual entry. Thank you, Dr. Hoke. Here are the results on the Key Angus female show. Going back to that division championship in class 301, first place, place in champion, champion, late junior heifer calf, 2914, Faith. Matthew Goodner, Owasso, Oklahoma. Second in reserve, 2915, Foxy, Katrina Swope, Texas. Third, 2911, Freedom, Dakota Getz, Ovid, Colorado. And the result of that last single entry class 302, first place 2917, Dunk Cupid's Lady, Tyson Fox, Fort Morton, Colorado. In the ring next, Class 303 on the Key Angus Female Show with our judge, Dr. Mark Hogue from Good Hope, Illinois. Class 303, single entry. After this, we'll have our, we got another single entry class after this. Another individual entry out here in our Key Angus Show. We've got a real strong, strong contender out here in terms of that power and strength of body. Good foot, good foundation. I think a heifer that really uh, tr carries a tremendous amount of width and volume uh, in an athletic fashion out here. I think a really, really high quality individual entry once again. Result on Class 303 Key Angus Female Show. First place, 29-22, exquisite. Ty Goss, Lady, Oklahoma. I do believe we have a division championship at Senior Heifer Camp. Division championship, the two first place Single entry classes 302, 303 in the ring. Bye. We'll double check that. Our judge on this uh, grand champion female selection on the Charlay side, our judge is Kyle Conley from Sulphur, Oklahoma, fourth generation Red Angus breeder, graduate from Oklahoma State University. His family at Conley Cattle teaming up with Penner Ranch. They're having their annual Angus Bull Auction in Ada, Oklahoma on February 9th. His wife Amanda's here. His two boys, Case and Jack, are here as well. Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Well, high quality July in individual entry out here, and I sure think uh, cleanness of joints and smoothness of pattern are, are two things that surface here in our July heifer. Uh, great body, good spine, really uh, good in terms of her fundamental build and female characteristic. Be interesting where she fits in the mix in terms of genuineness of foot shape and stoutness of foundation, but I sure think a good build, good spine, good bodied female on this side of the ring. We move on in the Key Angus Female Show, Class 304A, first place, right in, Men Violet, Claudia Albrey from Kewanee, Florida. Up next, the single entry, 304B.
Once we get all our division winners back out here in one spot, uh, it's been pretty refreshing to, to judge these Charlet females today and be able to find uh, cattle that match up consistently throughout each division. If you look down here with the start of our calf, our calf divisions here, and look down there at, uh, at our, you know, for instance, our second to last division winner with our pair, I think you'll see a lot of similarities uh, in just in terms of size and base width and body. Uh, and you know, as, as a person that didn't grow up around Charlet cattle, you, you tend to have a stereotype in terms of a breed. And you think about frame and growth and extension and just being rugged, useful cattle and the commercial uh, setting that uh, have, have a real place. Uh, but you, when you think about the show ring, uh, it's start become, starting to become more prevalent that these Charlet cattle have a place uh, in the show ring uh, and it can be competitive amongst other breeds uh, in, in other settings. Uh, uh, the Charlet cattle are just getting better and better. Uh, they're becoming uh, cattle that have more base widths. They're really sound. Uh, they're big bodied cattle that are uh, becoming more and more efficient in terms of size and, and uh, you can do whatever you want with them. You can raise small Charlet cattle, you can raise high growth Charlet cattle, whatever you prefer. But out here I think we do have a, a setting of cattle that uh, are big ribbed, they're sound structured and they're very well balanced and very correct in their, in their look from the side. Uh, well, we have a few Charlet cattle and we really enjoy being involved with the Charlet breed. Uh, the people uh, are sure welcoming to a, a person that hasn't been in that business very long and I sure appreciate the, the camaraderie amongst the breeders uh, and the people and the association uh, as well. Just a, a great setting, uh, especially for junior members to, to get started showing cattle. Uh, the Charlet Junior Program uh, is probably by far one of the top programs uh, to get involved with uh, for these young young people and junior members. So uh, sure want to uh, make sure they understand what people think of them. Uh, just very well thought of. So uh, to get started talking about these heifers out here, I think we've got a very, very high quality heifer that wins our first division. Uh, just uh, as I've talked today, I really appreciate the added base width. We get in a heifer that looks like this from the side, tremendous in terms of her capacity and body volume, while still balancing up really, really nice from the side. Uh, lots of thickness in that heifer's top. She's really wide when you get right behind her, but it doesn't uh, take away from her structure or her movement to add that width to her and give her all that capacity. Really pretty headed, really blends together nice from the side, but just tremendous rib cage. They're all deep bodied out here, but this heifer has a little extra in terms of her, her, her boldness of sp and spring her rib. The heifer that wins the second division, it's real obvious, those two look a lot alike. Uh, this, this one's big bodied, maybe, maybe just, just a little bit smoother in her shoulder than the heifer right in front of her, and maybe just a bit, little bit laid in at her tail head a, a lot shot better, but maybe not quite the expansion of rib and the, the spring of rib that's in the heifer right in front. Not to take anything away from her, I think this heifer is uh, really, really good, and those two calf uh, divisions are very similar and really close in terms of the overall quality there. Our December heifer that wins the, the third division, a uh, heifer that's extremely angular, maybe as feminine as anything in her look from the side, a heifer that's not maybe going to overwhelm you in terms of width and muscle, but she's as sound structured and functional in terms of the way she tra uh, travels as anything out here. Our summer heifer uh, in that division, there's a pair of heifers that were, are really good. They're just really different. This was the thicker made, more attractive heifer of the pair. As we talked, her teats and uh, her placement underneath was a little more refined and a little more correct, in my opinion. This heifer just really stands there and gives you a sharp look. If you had to get real critical on one, this heifer maybe wants to get a little bit uh, bunched up in the way she travels out of her front end, but a heifer that I think is hard to pick on. She's pretty headed, very feminine, and really attractive out here from the side. The young man showing the heifer that won the division after that. Uh, as we've talked on them calves, a uh, heifer that uh, has some width underneath, she's heavy boned and she's big footed, yet she comes to, to us in a really nice size package. She's not going to overwhelm you with frame and size, but this heifer really, really balances nicely and has a really nice combination in terms of frame, width, structure and balance. It's just, just a really, really, really high quality female there. there. 
our senior yearling here on the end, a female that's very, very stout. She's big-footed, wide-based, heavy-boned, but still, again, like our heifer right in front of her, she comes to you in a really moderate package, which is a good thing uh, in, my, in my world. She's big-bodied, she's stout, really attractive, and we've already got the proof that she's in production with a calf at her side. The cow-calf cow that wins the last division, very productive in her look, very level in her lines, has a high-quality calf at side, and just a nice, productive, good-looking pair to finish up our divisions. Let's give all these breeders a big round of applause. I'll go out here and select the two females that suit me, but it's been a pleasure to judge these females. And again, thanks to the Charlet Association, uh, Board of Directors and the National Western for allowing me to do it. So let's congratulate them again with a nice round of applause. Thank you. Here on the Key Angus side, uh, maybe not the largest uh, show in terms of number, but I'll tell you what, uh, uh, any head of cattle that hits this ring over the last uh, two weeks, uh, tremendous amount of time and effort have went in uh, to selection and mating decisions, getting these things born, getting them growing, weaned, uh, the expense to travel to the National Western. And I sure think as we look at this uh, lineup, you know, it, it's really consistent. It's quality for the population size that was represented. I've talked to them individually, and I sure think your champion uh, is that unique blend of those female characteristics of body design and functionality, yet she's got the extras in terms of that strength and foundation. I think for reserve, you can do a multitude of different things out here, but in my opinion, your reserve is most like our champion in terms of that extra bit of strength, that extra bit of body for her age and maturity. With that stated, my personal compliments and congratulations to the exhibitors and the breeders. Uh, let's make sure and put our hands together for the Key Angus Division out here, and we'll bring it to a close. Over on the Charlay side, your grand champion female is 27.52. That is, out of the junior division, that's just a starting, Kelton Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma. The reserve grand champion female was 26.77. That was out of the spring calf division. That is, Miss Outsider Bunny, Jeff's Cattle Company, Stephenville, Texas. Pictures, I believe. On the Charlay side, it will restart for the next class of 202. Late, late spring bull calves. Now, now back, back over on, on the key side, side the key Angus female show. show. Wrap things, things up there. Your, your programs don't match what we have for the divisions, divisions but I'm just going to jump to the key Angus female champion. That was 29-22. Exquisite. H-I-G-G -G exquisite 703E, Ty Goss, Lady, Oklahoma. And your reserve, reserve champion, Key Angus female, was 29.17 on a class 302. Dunk Cupid's lady, Tyson Fox, Ford Morgan, Colorado. When we resume classes on that side, it'll be the Key female show. Class 101A will lead things off there. Two classes in that first division on that side.
Once again, we'd like to continue to thank our State Arena sponsors. They also include Sullivan Supply and Stock Show University, trusted by champions nationwide. Thanks to them, all the livestock shows are webcasted live, and the archives are online at nationalwestern.com. They also sponsor the Livestock Media Scholar Program, Sullivan Supply, the innovative leader in livestock grooming supplies. I also want to thank John Deere, the official agriculture and turf equipment provider of the NASA Western. Visit your local John Deere dealer for great deals, and remember, nothing runs like a deer. So thanks once again to John Deere, Sullivan Supply Stock Show University, Purina Showbloom, and Andis. If you're looking for that edge in the show ring, consider the new blue ribbon blocking blade, super blocking blade from Andis. Designed for competition cuts with cattle fitting expert Kirk Steerwalt, the Andis Blue Ribbon Super Blocking Blade delivers a new level of performance with improved hair feed and clean show stopping lines. Stop by your authorized Andis dealer and see it today. In a picture break here, I want to mention that you can check out the pictures taken in the arena and at the backdrops and purchase pictures online from the official livestock photographer of the National Western Show Champions. Their website is showchampions.com. Once we resume on the Charlet side, it'll be spring 
calf, class 202, late spring bull calves. We'll lead things off on that side. On the Keenan female show, it'll be class 101A. First class as we restart the Keenan female show will be class 101A. Two classes within this junior heifer calf division. Judge once again, Dr. Mark Hogue from Good Hope, Illinois. Make the transition into the Kianina show out here and uh, nice pair of May heifer calves to start. I think uh, we have a performance advantage in the class winning heifer out here and we have just a strength advantage in terms of body and spread, volume of muscle down our top line I sure think is strong in that particular uh, fashion. Be interesting to project both these cattle in terms of angles and function long term, but I think today that's the strong candidate to start. Heifer calf in second, I like her greenness and immaturity for a May calf. I think she might have just a little more flex at her pasture and behind than what our class winner does. I'd alter her front end design just a shade, bring her neck a little nicer out of the top of her shoulder. Good one A. First place 2852, DAJS Hoda 900. Katie Satry from Montag, Texas. Second, 2907. Is second, SC, PCC, J. Lee, Wyatt Brown, Tecumseh, Oklahoma. The scratch was 2926.
Back underway on the Charlay side, this is Class 202 with our Judge Kyle Conley, Silver, Oklahoma. Late Spring Bull Camps. Starting our bull show, we've got a, a pair of bulls that are quite different, but uh, let, let it be simple and let performance and, and size and thickness just sort this pair. We've got a, a bigger framed, thicker, thicker made bull that wins the class. A heifer, or bull calf here that uh, looks a little bit uh, nicer from the profile, but he just gives up too much thickness and weight to our class winner to get up above him. Nice pair of bulls. I enjoy judging calves uh, and evaluating heifer calves because there's so much future, so much anticipation about what will happen uh, uh, as genetics take over, environment plays a role. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge to go ahead and try to line them up, but you kind of sit out here as a show dad and ask yourself which ones would you try to gather up if they were in a sale and you were interested in this particular uh, set of cattle. In my opinion, the best built one, the most athletic one, is going to start our class, and I really like this heifer in motion she doesn't want to lead very well going that way but as we turn the corner and she sees the exit gate I think you can really start to admire this heifer's quality she's the best in her angles the best in her build the best in her feet and I think that allows her to be the most functional long term I like her length of spine I like her body shape really quite well heifer in second will bring her neck just a little higher out of the the top of her shoulder uh, really got a captivating look out here a good presence a well presented deep middle heifer that you like from that standpoint I'd like like to strengthen her right as you step in behind her out of her pin set relative to our class winner and then as you study her front feet you study her hock shape and size relative to her rear foot I'd maybe alter that just a shade relative to our class winner. Heifer in third has got a captivating look, and I love green, immature, uh, skinny, skinny heifer, heifer calves, calves, and I, I think, think this is a, a classic case. I think as this heifer, heifer takes to feed and develops, develops I, really I really like, like a lot of things about this heifer, heifer silhouette, silhouette, her pattern and her balance. I want to make sure that that shape and angle to her hock stays comfortable long term. She gets enough shape to her heart with time on feed. I think that will be a really high quality one. An impeccably presented heifer that we've got here in fourth really really stout bodied really well presented this heifer's angles on both end are a little concerning to me and consequently she'll be just a little up in her spine a little awkward in her movement heifer in fourth uh, or fifth actually is better built in terms of her spine and her angle to her hock or flex in her pastern i change the shape to her feet then make sure her neck shoulder assembly is just a little more appropriate young lady does a great job of showing uh, a really sound hind-legged cattle that's very functional the orange one that closes really long really level uh, this heifer in terms of her toe and ankle and heels a little different just a little more tubular in her body design than the cattle that precede her in class i think a good set of key heifer calves on this side of the ring Another pair of bull calves in our second class. Uh, to me, it's pretty cut and dry. This uh, more moderate sized bull uh, balances up better, shows more muscle. Uh, just a real attractive package and an easy class winner here to start. Uh, the bigger frame bull goes second. He's really long fronted, really nice headed, uh, but longer, longer spine bull here, but just doesn't have the, the capacity and volume of the bull that wins the class, but two really high quality bulls in this second class. Catch up on results here with the Charlay side, Lane Spring Bull Calves, Class 202, first place 2791, Magic Mountain Folsom, Pat O'Dell, Melanie Boonstra, Colton, Oregon, second 2793, Top, Top Gun, Gun. Skeens, Cattle, Cattle Company, Company Gainesville, Gainesville, Texas, Texas Richard DeMoss, DeMoss Bowie, Bowie, Texas, Class 203A, Early Spring Bull Calves, first place 2795, Mr. Outsider, 8941, Thomas Ranch, Herald, South Dakota, Second, 2794, El Migo, Riley Lauren Creasy, Macomb, Illinois. Up next, the ring for the Charlay Class 203B, early spring bull calves, and then after this will be the division championship. Back over in the Keenina female show with our judge, Dr. Mark Hogue of Good Hope, Illinois. This is your late junior heifer calf division championship. We bring our four contenders out here uh, to complete our uh, calf division out here in the Keys, and we look at our two class winners and talk to them individually within class, and I think there's maybe some differences in build and body design between those two class winners. We look at our second place, and I sure think 
both present with quality, uh, talk to them within class, uh, and don't need to uh, rehash it. I sure thank my compliments to all four exhibitors. We're going to keep the pair together out of the second class within the division. Young man is champion, young ladies reserve. Nice job. Go through the results on the Keating a female show before we announce the junior heifer calf champion. Class 101A, first place, 28-52, DAJS Hoda. That is Katie Satry from Montague, Texas. Second, Second place in the class, class 2907, J. Lee, Wyatt Brown, Tecumseh, Oklahoma. In class 101B, first place, 2854, Daddy's favorite, Land Landgraf, Medill, Oklahoma. Second was 2862, Mrs. Felicity, Katrina Swope, Texas. Third, 2858, Candy, Julia Fry, Johnstown, Colorado. Fourth, 2856, Steck Dunk Miley, Dawson Minor, Iowa. Fifth, 2859, Josie's Ace, Josie Wilkins, Lamar, Arkansas. Sixth, 2857, Fergie, Kynan, DeMoss, Bowie, Texas. Program placings are 1, 4, 6, 3, 5, scratch 2. Real quick, your late junior heifer calf champion on the Guinea Female Show comes out of Class 101B. That's 2854. Daddy's favorite, Lat Landcraft, Manila, Oklahoma. The reserve was 2862. Mrs. Felicity, Katrina Swope, Texas. In the ring at this time, Class 102A on the Guinea Female Show. Really nice class of bulls with two in here in particular that sure stand out. Uh, there's some give and take between the two. Uh, obviously, we're starting with the heavier weight bull. Uh, it's got a little more power today, probably a little further along. Uh, but uh, this bull is just uh, awfully impressive in terms of his feet. You start there and you really appreciate the shape of his feet. Uh, this bull gets out and travels uh, very, very free. He's long bodied, he's extremely thick topped and stout hipped. Uh, just a really, really powerful, powerful bull here to start off with. Uh, this bull in second, uh, if you want to argue this bull is definitely uh, cleaner fronted, a little more upheaded, definitely cleaner through the base of his chest and up through his neck, uh, but you know, just a little bit behind, I guess if you have to compare him to the bull that wins the class, uh, granted he's not behind, uh, but there's just a difference in weight there uh, today. But I really like this bull's outline, he's really stylish, he's really upheaded, and there's a lot of quality in that second place bull. Our third place bull shows tons of shape and expression of muscle. Muscle. He's long bodied, has plenty of performance. He just lacks the quality look and overall eye appeal of those two in the, in the beginning of the class. But three uh, real, real nice bulls that are very useful. There's results on the Charlet side for spring calf, the class 203B early spring bull calves. Coming in the ring will be a division championship first and second in the ring from 202, 203A, and 203B. Here's the results on 203B. First place, 2806, Boy Outlier, 812 ETPLD, Boyer Show Cattle, Seville, Ohio. Second, 2800, CAG, GARW, Keep and Guard, 8643F, Cagney Effling, Highmore, South Dakota. Third, 2804, Ajax, Elliott McClure, Gibson City, Illinois. The scratch was 2798. And your programs of placings are scratch, two, three, top of the page, one. First and seconds, once again, back in the ring, the Spring Calf Bull Championship. This is our judge, Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma, fourth generation Red Angus, registered Angus breeder, graduate Oklahoma State University, Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma, for this Spring Calf Division Championship. Haven't seen a lot of bull calves yet, but uh, we've sure seen some quality in these first uh, classes. Our uh, first class winner would excel in terms of weight per day of age, no doubt. Uh, he's by far the biggest frame, the biggest outline bull we've seen. Maybe doesn't quite have the, the quality of the two that stand right behind him in terms of show ring appeal, but a bull that's definitely got some muscle and some use. 
our second class winner, just really complete, very rugged design bull, uh, very, very uh, balanced as you view him from the side, has good testicle development for a April calf and uh, just balances up extremely well. Look at the March bull on the very end in class, uh, just very dominant in that pair of bulls that uh, really stood out. He's really wide underneath. He's really good at the ground in terms of his foot shape and size. He gets out and travels, even though he's wanting to kind of pull against the halter and not get out and travel uh, with uh, some energy today. He's sound. You can see his joints and his feet. He's a good bull. Uh, really impressive calf there on the end. We're going to use him to win the division and pull in our second and take another look. As our second place in that class comes into contention, I think it definitely comes down to the two that stand here on the end. The bull that wins the second class is probably more like our division champion in the terms he's more rugged, he's really, really stout and powerful. He's maybe not quite as extended through his front end as you compare him to the bull that comes in behind him. And he's probably not as sharp outlined and clean made as the bull that stands behind him, but I sure appreciate the body, the overall ruggedness in that, uh, that second class winner. Our second place bull to the champion here, uh, really, really extended through his front end, and he's really stylish and really correct as you view him from the side. I think he's really unique in his look. Uh, I do think this bull is going to do a good job down the road, and I'm going to use him for reserve. I, I really like that bull's front end, his muscle pattern, and a really stylish look. Spring calf champion bull selection for the Charlay. 2806 is your champion. That's out of class 203B. Boy Outlier, 812 ETPLD, Boyert Show Cattle, Seville, Ohio. And the reserve spring calf champion comes from the same class as your champion. That's 2800 CAG GRW Keep and Guard, 8643F, Cagney Effling, Highmore, South Dakota. We move to the junior calf division for the junior bull calves. Our first class will be 204A, two classes in this division. Tremendous uh, class of key heifer calves on this side of the ring, and not only strong in number, but also strong in quality. What's interesting about this particular population is if you like them a particular way, there's a kind of one of every kind, in my opinion, at this stage in their development. I think you focus on the top pair, and these are the two cattle within this population that blend performance, strength, and volume with that show ring presence and look. In my opinion, the pair of cattle, as you study them in terms of on the stand, I think our class-winning heifer's nicer on the bottom side of her neck. In terms of her shape, she'll bring her neck a little higher on the top side of her shoulder. But to me, the biggest sorting factor between these two is when these cattle are in motion, the more athletic heifer that sets her hind leg softer to the surface and more correct in the shape to her hock joint is our class winner. And I think structure is the primary factor that sorts them. When you're on top of the cattle, you can actually appreciate the heifer in second more in terms of her hip pin set relationship. I think she's a little stronger up high than what our class winner is. Love the size of her feet, love the size of her bones. When this heifer gets in motion for a calf, in my opinion, she will set her hind leg a little hard to the surface. One would ask themselves why, study the shape to her hock when she's parked, and it's a little loud and it's a little vertical for me personally. Uh, when you have a limited budget, and I don't know what this one costs, but maybe as a, as a cattle buyer, I will try to find the green skinny ones. I think the green skinny one in this class sets in third and I tell you if she does chub up at any point in her life this thing's big time and her look her presence and, and attractiveness tremendous she's so slim necked and shallow jawed I'm afraid uh, that her body shape is a little mirror image of that today if she does get bold enough and wide enough I think her builds good her joints are good her feet's good and this thing is deadly on the profile today just runs out of horsepower really an interesting cattle in terms of breeding value sits in four this thing's foot size and shape 
shape is big and bold and genuine. This one's tremendous in terms of her muscularity and shape. For a calf at this juncture, I thought she was a little rounder and looser in her shoulder. I want to set her tail head a little more appropriate into her skeleton, but a good heifer in terms of her flex of pasturing from a side, you get in behind the cattle and you want to make sure her hawk stays within her framework long term. If she does, that's really good. Next pair is close. I think this gray one, uh, a little skinny, maybe a little uncomfortable in her spine today, but I really like some things about this calf in terms of her presence, her look, her eye appeal. Today, she pulls her hawk in just a shade, want to strengthen her up to the center part of her body. On the stand, got a powerful, big, bold cattle that comes next, impeccably well presented. Angles are this one's primary concern for me in terms of structure. Want to make her sounder on both ends. Ever that closes, just a little rougher pattern today, but a moderate, muscular cattle doesn't fit in this particular lineup in terms of that extra presence and look that we have within this population. Great class of uh, key heifer calves. Nice class of March, uh, February bull calves. Um, I'm going to start with the, the March bull calf that gets out and travels the best in this class. He's by far more moderate, a little bit smoother in his look from the side. I like his rib cage and rib design. Good testicle development, just a really stout featured rugged made bull that I think has a lot of quality to him. Our second place bull definitely has more length of body and more frame size, more extended. He just doesn't have that soft middle that the bull that wins the class does and just doesn't have that rugged look and uh, powerful design, but two real useful, high quality bulls. Back over on the Akinina female show, here's the results on class 102A. First place, 2875. Who's watching? Katie and Jeff Mize. Indiana, second, 2874, Houdette Steiner, Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa, third, 2872, Miss 5F, Hadley Dunklow, Wayne, Nebraska, fourth, 2936, GCC Fanny, Trent Ray, Glencoe, Oklahoma, fifth, 2864, Coy, Charlotte, Hadley Dunklow, Wayne, Nebraska, sixth, 2867, Fergie, 89F, Samantha Schrog, Marion, South Dakota, seventh, 2866, Miss Chanel, 114F, Kaya Hendrickson, Montana. Placing for your programs for 102A are 576 4 3 2 1. In the ring next, Class 102B for the Kenina show. After this will be a division championship. Got a real, real high quality individual entry here on the key side. And I tell you, it doesn't take long to look in the ring and see the presence, the attractiveness, the female characteristics that this heifer uh, exemplifies. Love her condition, love her body shape at this stage in her maturity. I don't think it's too much. I think it's just right to where she's got some gas left in her tank, yet she's got that extra length of spine and pattern uh, to really balance long term a high quality individual entry. On our programs, that single entry was actually part of class 102B. That is first place 2882, Jason Taylor's Tamale ET, Taylor Dorsey Eaton, Colorado. The rest in that class are scratches. Up next, first and seconds from 102A and B for the early junior heifer calf division championship. Judge once again, Dr. Mark Hope from Good Hope, Illinois. Back, Back over in the, the Charlay side, class 204A, junior bull calves. First place, 2810, Dayton, Barjay Charlay, Liverpool, Texas. Second, 2807, Magnum, Odin Charlay Ranch, South Dakota. In the ring of the Simons class 204B, junior bull calves, with our judge, Kyle Conley of Sulphur, Oklahoma. The final class in this junior bull division, junior bull calf division. I sure think if the Keenan Association wants to put an ad together for the promotion of the breed, this would be a good division to do it. We have two class winners and a second place individual out here that are absolutely tremendous uh, individuals to study. And I sure think they all three have uh, breeding value. They all three have a, a future within the show ring 
my compliments to the breeders and the firms that represent these. Uh, you know, obviously we come down to a champion reserve, and I think it's uh, uh, it, it can be relatively close. But if you talk about body strength, you talk about forerib, you talk about spine, and just sheer volume relative to their frame size, making sure which two cattle are the most proportional for me personally. We're going to keep the pair out of the first class within the division together. Champion is a young man, reserves a young lady. All three, tremendous. Let's give him a nice round of applause on the Keenina side, if you would. We'll get, get to the, the results, results on that early junior heifer calf championship, championship for the Keena female show in just a moment. Double, Double check our result. A lot of trade offs here on these two bulls on the top end of the January class. Uh, I like both these bulls, but there's also things about each one of them I'd like to change. Uh, standing still here, this bull wins the class hands down. He's stronger topped, he's, he's better balanced. Uh, he's a bull that's cleaner sheathed and he's got a bigger foot and probably more bone to go along with it. Uh, this bull's testicles are my biggest uh, uh, disadvantage for him. They're big enough, but the, uh, they're not any too big uh, if they were, um, development wise I'd like to see him further along this bulls really sound here in second he's really attractive from the side beautiful front and beautiful head on that bull uh, I'd like to see him just get a little stronger in that top line see him just a touch softer ribbed and maybe clean him up a notch in that sheath but I think a bull that's really good in his testicles really good in his feet and legs really stylish up through his front end uh, both are really good bulls lots of trade-offs between the two the bull in third has advantage in performance out of all the, the whole class here. Uh, deep ribbed, soft made bull. It's very functional in his kind. Uh, just maybe lacks the show ring appeal that uh, the two in front of him have, uh, but a really, really useful class of bulls here all the way through. In, in the, the ring, ring for the keys, keys is class 103, the Salter Senior Half Calf Division Championship. Coming in the ring for the Charlay will be the Junior Calf Division Championship for Bulls. Division lineup here in front of us. We've got two class winners out here in a second that are, are sure high quality bulls. Our first class winner, just a very functional, low maintenance kind of bull. Really, really sound as he gets out and travels. Very masculine and rugged in his look. Uh, by far the best testicle bull in the lineup here. Uh, just real, real useful in his kind. Maybe not the, the hairiest uh, show bull in the world, but a very, very good kind of bull. Our second class winner, really nice outline, really attractive in his look. A bull that uh, we talked his biggest disadvantage was, was his testicle size. Uh, other than that, he loved the bull. Uh, he's really attractive, but uh, that's your biggest question if that's, a, if that's an issue. Uh, let's give these breeders a quick round of applause, and I'll go select the two that suit me the best. All right, let's catch us up on results here. Stick with the Charlay side. Junior calf division for the bull. Champion is 28-10 on the class 204A. That's Dayton, Barjay, Charlay, Liverpool, Texas. Reserve comes out of class 204B, 28-12. 
Moves Like Sweeter, Virginia Cal LLC, Oneida, South Dakota. Third in that class, 204, by the way, was 28-11. Liberty, F7, Bar J, Charlay, Liverpool, Texas. Up next will be Senior Calf, Senior Bull Calves, class 208. A single class within the division. Senior Calf Division Championship will be in the ring at the same time. Going back over on the key side, your results for that early junior heifer calf championship. Both your champion reserve come from class 102A. Your champion was 2875. Who's, Who's watching? watching? Jeff Mize. Kate, Katie Mize out of Indiana. Reserve was 2874. Who's that? Steiner. Sarah Sullivan Dunlap, Iowa. In the ring once again, class 103. And also your senior heifer calf division championship. Judge Dr. Mark Hope from Good Hope, Illinois. As a fan of the livestock industry uh, and a 4-H uh, uh, dad, you go to a lot of shows and you listen and you study the population uh, and rest assured, uh, judges select and, and put emphasis on different things within breeding livestock and that's okay uh, because everybody likes their breeding livestock uh, built a little differently. Uh, within your key show today, uh, you know, I, I hope uh, breed for breed, uh, we will focus on structure, we will focus on build first and foremost. And this little boy, uh, his heifer was fighting him a little bit over here and you gotta watch what you wish for as a show judge because I was trying to imagine this heifer loose. I think he's doing a good job, but I thought, wonder how she moved loose. I think it'd be pretty good. Literally two steps later, he tripped, she got loose, took four steps, and it's what I needed to see. This is the soundest cattle that we have within the group. Uh, she's got the best hind leg, got the best shape to her hock, got the best spine of any of the cattle that we've got within the drive. Slope to shoulders good. This is a good calf. She fights him a little bit, bring her head down, but when she's loose, I think she's very comfortable, very collected. She's not the widest skeleton one within this particular group. That's okay. I think it's proportional for me. I sat out here with this heifer and asked myself when she was over against the fence line here, this heifer's really got some interesting pieces when she's on the stand. Love her length of top line. I love her length of neck. Tremendous extension. And her angles read right on the stand. I didn't know if this, she just had enough sweep for a fall born. You know, will she get it with time on feed and with a calf? I sure think she will. My biggest concern for her today in this particular group of four, when she's in motion, she will pull her hock in and quick step off of her hind leg just a little more than I I'd like to see interesting pieces in the heifer in third the widest skeleton one we've got the biggest body and I like that width to the center part of her body with that extra width her shoulder will separate from her spot her rib cage a little her tail head will be a little unorthodox when she gets in motion on the stand I like her I think she comes in a few too many pieces for me in motion real stout real hairy real powerful comes in four young lady does a good job when this heifer's in motion shoulder tilts forward hip and, and hind leg get a little straight get a little off so with that stated structure limits her to fourth in a very competitive class. My compliments to the exhibitors once again. Nice pair of senior bull calves over here to look at, but I think uh, we've got an individual that sure starts off and needs to needs to win pretty easy in my mind. Uh, from the profile, really like this bull's head and neck. He goes into a really top, strong top line. His tail head ties into him nicely. He has a really attractive hind leg set. Just a really high quality bull there to start off. I don't have any uh, EPDs in front of me, but I would just predict this bull to, to read with some growth. He's he's extremely powerful. Uh, he's a high performance. Bull. Bull. Maybe he just doesn't balance and tie together quite as nicely as the bull in front. His tail head gets up a little bit, but a really, really powerful, rugged made bull that goes second. Back over on the key side in the ring will be class 104, two entries. Should be two entries, maybe just one as a scratch. 
Here's the result in Class 103 and your Senior Hanford Camp Division Championship. First place, 28-86 and champion, Bucky's Dream. Wyatt Dunklau, Wayne Nebraska. Second and reserve, 28-89, Ute Stylin. That is Ashlyn Ruff, Athens, Alabama. Third, 29-37, Ryden and Style, Brooklyn Curtain, Iowa. Fourth, 28-87, Silas Lady, Ryan Carlson, Julesburg, Colorado. Once again in the ring, Class 104. And this is also your Summer Yearling Hanford Championship, I believe. Really a high quality individual entry out here, uh, strong in her foundation, attractive in her neck, right in terms of her frame size, in terms of a mature cow, uh, good body, just really, really a, a quality Keenina female on this side of the ring. We keep showing them in pairs in the Charlotte Bull Show, but uh, they're always a good pair. We have a good bull to start the class in terms of his structure. He's a really good-footed bull that takes a really free, long stride, really balanced from the side. He's extended through his front. I really like his muscle shape, uh, moderate in his size, just a really high-quality bull uh, to start this class. Again, we have a really high-growth bull here that goes second, maybe not quite as free in his movement as the bull that wins the class, but just a really powerful, rugged, made bull that's stout. Try to catch up results again. Let's go back to the Charlay side. we got to go back to that Cedar Calf Division Championship. And Class 206, first place in champion, 28-16. J&J Vincent Vega was first in champion. Sidney Johnson, Orlando, Oklahoma, second in reserve in that division, 28-19. Mr. Vendetta, 315E, Riley Durer, Milan, Illinois. This last class was 208 and the division for intermediate champion bull. First place in champion, 28-22. WIAWC linebacker. Wild Indian Acres, DeSoto, Missouri, Wright Charlay, Richmond, Missouri. Second reserve, 28-21, Hot Shot, Tara Tillerson from Warden, Washington. In the ring, we move to Junior Division Spring Bulls, Spring Earning Bulls, Class 209, with our Judge Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Back over on the key side, in the ring at this time is Class 105A. Here's the result in Class 104 and your summer yearling heifer champion. First place and champion, 29-26, JLSX, Miss Veronica, Trevor Bornman, uh, going to Iowa. As I mentioned in the ring, this will be class 105A. We have three classes in this junior yearling heifer division. Judge once again, Dr. Mark Hogue, Good Hope, Illinois. Really a powerful set of April heifers out here to study, and, and there's so much quality uh, of cattle. I, I do know uh, maybe the placing can get a little close for some, but I, I know the best showman uh, is a young lady in the purple sweater. Uh, but we're not judging showmanship today. We're actually judging the stock. I think as you look at the three heifers, particularly on the stand, uh, the class-winning heifer, we talk about proportionality, the nice-shaped neck to the sweeping body and the bold rib uh, cage and design. I think this heifer excels. The heifers in two and three, really proportional, deepens, widens, and progresses in the right direction from her front to the rear third of her body. Like the angle in the set, she's got to her hind leg. It's comfortable. It's a clean joint. It's, it's a good foot. foot. I, I like that, that about her. Both cattle in one and two, I'd maybe alter their front end uh, design just to shade. She'll get just a little out in her elbow, but boy, there's a lot of cow power from their back, and I think it balances very well. Love the uh, mature cow size in the heifer in second. That's a low maintenance keening, a female with lots of body, a good hind leg, a good spine. 
and a good, good tail head. At the National Western, in a show ring setting, she'll be just a little more general in the shape and look and attractiveness to her head and neck, and she'll separate just a shade there at the top of her blade. But, boy, you want to talk about function, utility, and basic. I like that one a good deal. Uh, young lady in third, on the stand, this heifer can run with that top pair when she gets in motion. Her angles are her undoing out here within this particular group of three. Uh, gets just a nickel steep up front, just a nickel tight off of her hind leg. Good set of three females. My compliments to the breeders. Here's a result on class 105A on the key side. First place, 2897, BMW Ace, 402EET, Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. Second, 2890, Reese, Ashley Caldwell, Avery, Texas. Third, 2895, Miss Me, Josie Wilkins, Lamar, Arkansas. Two, scratch, three, one. That's the results for class 105A. Those other two that are in that same class, those are actually their own classes. In the ring next, class 105B, that's the 2899. That's 105B, and then 2901 is in its own class, 105C. That's the next two classes. Too bad our individual entry over here doesn't have uh, uh, some cattle to compete against within this particular class. This is a really, uh, really high-quality female. Once again, that rear two-thirds of her body uh, I love in terms of her udder design. I love her length, the hip. I think it correlates with a clean joint, a uh, hawk joint. It correlates with a good hind leg. I really, really like that about her. You know, depending on the, the, the speed of the track or the depth of the water within the show, her neck shoulder design, uh, uh, you know, maybe fixed just a smidgen, but boy, that's being picky of a heifer that's great in her condition, great in her pattern. Uh, love the functionality that she's got in the rear two thirds of her skeleton. Result on class 105B, first place 2899, Mexicali. Ryan Nolislager from Dune, Iowa. Up next, class 105C, that's that entry 2901. After this class, we'll have the Junior Yearling Heifer Division Championship and then the Champion Kenina Female Selection. Once again, an intimidating female on the key side to study. Uh, got a big, stout, powerful bread uh, in terms of feature. Talk about proportions and look. Uh, one that has the neck and shoulder design uh, that she does and has that length and power and bulk uh, volume really, really good. You know, when she gets in motion, uh, to me, her hawk shapes uh, and, and the way she sets her hind leg down maybe just a little tough to the surface, but I don't mind, I guess, as they get this close to calving that they can move a little that way. I uh, prefer to avoid that in calves, uh, but a powerful, powerful uh, uh, individual here to study in your key. Result on class 105C, first place 2899, Mexicali. Ryan, excuse me, that's Sassy J. Lynn, Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. First place 2901 in that class. Up next, Junior Yearling Hanford Division Championship. Really, really good class of big Charlet bulls over here. Uh, depending on what your what your priorities are, I think you could come up with a lot of different placings in this class. But for me, the one thing I've never questioned doing is using this bull to win. Uh, really smooth, really attractive profiling bull. I love his softness and his uh, smoothness as you view him from the side. He's really up-headed uh, and got a nice skull on him. He's good in his testicles. Uh, just a bull that really has, has few problems and really stands out in this class as being complete, fault-free, and really soft-made. 
the treble bull for me is this uh, big framed bull. Uh, as far as how his structure is, how his testicles are, uh, how this bull balances, there's really not uh, just tons of problems with him. For me, he's on the upper side in, in terms of frame, uh, but uh, I'm not going to hold it against him just because he's a little bigger. This bull's really nice made. He balances good. Uh, I'd like to give this bull more forerib and more flank, but as far as his skeleton's made, his feet, his testicles, he's a really, really good bull. This bull that comes in third, uh, initially you really like this bull when he comes in. As you study him on the move, that's where I'd like to change him. He really wants to, to get, get wide off those rear legs, legs and get choppy in his movement. movement. But, but as, as far as, as a bull that's big topped and really square in his hip structure, this bull's really, really good there. I just gotta see this bull move freer to get him up any higher, but a really nice sized, really stout hipped bull. Uh, just needs to be freer in his movement. And I like the size of this bull here in fourth. He's really a good bull. I just like to see him a little bit freer out of that shoulder. He gets a little bit choppy and his testicles are the smallest of the four. And that's where I like to change him. But a bull that's really sized right. He's really soft. He's really smooth. Uh, really a nice bull. Just needs to be bigger testicled and freer moving. Up next, the ring for the Charlotte Bay Class 210 Junior Yearling Bulls. Here's the results on Class 209. First place, 28-26. Resource. Bershey Cattle Company, Cattle LLC out of South Dakota, and Luke Doris, Rehight, South Dakota. Second place, 28-23, Freebird, Braxton Filippo, Rush Springs, Oklahoma. Third, 28-25, Deliverance, Jerry Vaughn, Derby, Kansas, Kim Cordon, Monticello, Minnesota, Thomas Ranch, Harold, South Dakota. Fourth, 28-24, Outlaw, Riley Dura from Milan, Illinois. Once again, the ring, Class 210, our final class before the Junior Champion Bull Division Championship. So on the Charlet side, after this class will be our Junior Division Championship. Then we have the Senior Division, there's two classes, the Senior Bull Championship, then the Grand Champion Bull Selection, then the group classes. That'll round up the show on the Charlet side. In the ring, to my right, Dr. Mark Hogue from Good Hope, Illinois. We have our Keenina Junior Yearling Heifer Division Championship. First and seconds are back in there from classes 105, A, B, and C. After this, grand champion Keenina female selection. You always try to uh, put the show together in your mind as uh, you get through divisions and you say, okay, uh, this was a good division. What are we going to do next? What's coming next? This is a good division. And in a small population of cattle, uh, if there's not a large, large number, you know, you're kind of determined by what's presented uh, within the ring. We've got some really, really powerful females out here, and I think some very, very close calls. I think as I, I guess uh, I told you, I'm not one to read, discuss each division winner uh, within a particular uh, division, but I think this class or this division might merit it. Uh, what are the things going through my mind? I love the female characteristic. I love the bone. I love the feet. I love the design that the first class winner is. Her body shape matches her frame size tremendously well. And in my mind on the stand and in motion, when I study her behind, I said this could be uh, my division champion. If she gets out of her front end comfortably enough, she'll paddle just a smidgen. But boy, got a tremendous, to me, female uh, feminine characteristic about her. Good head, good neck, sweepy belly. Heifer that gets in second, uh, that wins the second class. We talked about that thing's hind leg design I love. Love her length of hip, love her length of spine. spine. If she's not as masculine at the top side of her neck, I think this one has some real, real interesting breeding value. Front two-thirds are tremendous. Maybe my favorite of any of these cattle if her front end design is appropriate. Then you get into the intimidating creature that wins the third class, and I think her slope to shoulder is probably better uh, than the heifer that wins the first class or second class tremendous power and she's uh, getting so close to calving uh, really really good there you have to ask yourself as a show judge and a cattle enthusiast is she getting off of her hind leg right enough today she almost seems just a bit hesitant and injured out here uh, I'd like to see her set down just a little more consistently behind but she's so good designed up front she's so good and massive in her body uh, you know I'm not sure that every female in the country 
needs to have that much power and feature, but boy, to invoke uh, genetic change within a population, I think this one reads like she will. So tremendous uh, division, our second place individual, don't want to leave him out. We talked about his uh, female being a low maintenance, really functional kind of cow, not maybe the sexiest fronted uh, cattle that we've had uh, within this particular group. As I watch him come and go, I told you earlier, structure is going to be important to me, and particularly hind leg design, my favorite heifer within this division, wins our first class. She'll be champion. Reserve is going to be the big power cow uh, the young ladies got out of class three. Let's give them all a nice round of applause. Got a good class of bulls over here. Uh, and I guess uh, the first thing I'd say is all you breeders that bring a big bull to the show, I mean, you have a plan uh, with them, and that's why you breed them, and, and you like them. But we're just out here to place them, so I don't want to take anything away from any of these big herd bulls. Uh, but the bull that needs to win the class in my mind is here. Uh, just in terms of his foot size and his bone and his outline, he's really thick and he's powerful and he just gives you that extra extra width and substance when you look at him. He's rugged and masculine in his look and balances up exceptionally well. If you were getting real nitpicky, you would maybe say he could be softer middled, but a bull that I think sure fits into the first spot pretty easy. If you talk about function and body, and just some, something that's going to be easy to maintain, this second place bull is extremely thick and powerful. He doesn't want to get out and travel very good today, but he's a bull that uh, is sound. He's just being lazy and uh, kind of nonchalant today. But uh, I do appreciate the rib and the body that bull has and the testicle development and the ruggedness that bull has. If I had EPDs in front of me, I'd guess this bull to be calving ease. He's really smooth and he's really correct and he's really sound and free moving. I'd just like to see him bigger testicle and heavier boned today to get up any more in the class. But a, but a good group of bulls, really solid, all three. Catch up on results. Go back over to the Keenina side. That junior yearling heifer division championship. Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa, takes both champion and reserve. The champion was 2897 BMW Ace 402 EET. And the reserve was, and that was out of class 105A. The reserve was out of 105C, 2901, Sassy J. Lynn. Once again, Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa, takes champ reserve in that junior yearling heifer division. In the ring will be your division champion reserves for the Keenan of Female selection with our judge, Dr. Mark Hogue of Good Hope, Illinois. In the ring on the Charlet side is your junior bull championship. First and second is back in the ring from 209 and 210. Here's the results on 210. First place, 28-29, Gunslinger. Aces Wild Ranch, LLC, Weatherford, Texas, J.D. J. Charlet, Wilmar, Minnesota. Second, 28-30, Marino. Mar J. Charlet's Reed and Larry Ludicky from Liverpool, Texas. Third was 38-27, Jackpot. This Mukes Ranch, Oklahoma. 3-1-2 is the pricings there. Judge on that side, Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Really nice division. We've got two class winners and, and two seconds that are sure uh, worth talking about. Our first class winner, uh, you really appreciate how smooth and correct the bull is. He's really deep in his forerib and flank. Uh, good testicles on him, but he's just really a, a attractive bull to look at from the side. And his biggest advantage in this division is his rib and his body and his depth. He's really smooth in his shoulder and he's really up headed. Just a really nice, attractive bull. Our second class winner, as we talked to him in class, big boned and big footed. Uh, he's good in his testicles. He's really level topped. He's maybe not quite as soft made as some of the bulls we've seen in here today, but that's where he'll uh, add an advantage when you use him. If you need to add some power, this bull's going to be one that sure looks like he'll do it. As we had our second place bulls, our first class, a bigger framed. A uh, really good structured bull that uh, you sure didn't want to discount any. Again, if you need a bigger frame bull that's good footed, big testicled, and really has a nice outline, he's him. And we have a real functional, big bodied bull that's real moderate and is kind and, and really good doing kind of bull that was second in our last class. But let's give the breeders a quick round of applause and I'll go select the two that suit me the best. Here on the Keenina side, we're coming to the close of our female show, and I tell you, uh, it's been a really, really good set of cattle to describe and discuss. 
I think there, there's been some challenges to put together and a judge, you know, you want to make sure to make the right decision and, and the right decision, uh, so many factors go into it. They have to be females that you like in terms of their kind and their consistency. Uh, you know, we talked about emphasizing structure and emphasizing those types of things. And, and uh, then the next factor that goes into uh, not only do you like the individual cattle, uh, but then do you use calves or do you use big heifers? And I, as a show dad, uh, I probably get frustrated and maybe just a little getting beat by calves when you got a good big one. But then as a show dad, you got to say, okay, are the big ones good enough? Are the little ones, are we just making excuses and genetics hasn't taken over yet? I think this particular lineup is a challenge for me to go ahead and say there wasn't just one or two that says, hey, these are the bee's knees. They got to use them. Uh, and no questions asked. Any judge in America would do that. Uh, I think there's three cattle out here that you could justify even four four to, to five maybe even to put in the mix and shake them out uh, the, the way you want to and so I tell you I watched them move and I, I, I said earlier uh, I'm a big structure fan and I want to make sure that cattle are athletic cattle are, are, are good I want them built right first I like them stout legged I like them powerful I like them wide those are all masculine terms and I think first and foremost for me a female needs to be built right and have tremendous body sweep and shape and then we'll put the extra bells and whistles on them uh, within a particular uh, breed uh, that we're exhibiting so I think it's been a challenge I really like the set that we've got I'm gonna put your grain and reserve together before I do let's congratulate all the breeders and the exhibitors that have made it to the National Western in the 2019 Keenan a female show. Champion Keenan a female 2875. That comes out of the Junior Heifer Camp Division. That is TSSC Who's Watching? Jeff Mize, Indiana. And your reserve champion comes from that last division. That is 2897 Ace. Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. Picture break, I believe, or are we going to the key Angus bull show? We'll see. If we do, it'll be class 401 coming in, single entry. Let's go back over on the division championship for the Charlay Intermediate Champion Bull 28-22, linebacker, Wild Indian a Acres, DeSoto, Missouri, right, Charlay, Richmond, Missouri. Reserve was Hot Shot, Terry Tillerson, Ward, Washington. Junior Bull Champion, 2826 Resource, Virtue Kennel LLC, South Dakota, and also Luke and Doris from Rehight, South Dakota. Your reserve was 2829 Gunslinger, Aces Wild Ranch LLC, Weatherford, Texas, and JDJ Charlay Wilmore, Minnesota. Class 211 in the ring, first of two classes in the Senior Bull Division. Two really contrasting bulls, but uh, both of them really have some quality. I prefer the stouter, longer bodied bull. Looks like a uh, really up headed, good attractive bull with more muscle than our second place bull. I really like the softness and the, and the foot and the movement advantage this bull has in second, but unfortunately he's a little shorter hipped and he wants to taper out of his hip, but I do want to appreciate the soundness, the structure and the, the depth of body advantage that bull has over our first place bull. Result on class 211, senior yearling bulls, first of two classes in this division. First place, 2832, main event, Erica Bianchi from Gilroy, California. Second, 2831, JVS Cattle Company, Sulphur, Louisiana. Up next, 213, two-year-old bulls, two entries. Then we'll have our senior champion bull selection. Then the grand champion bull selection with our judge, Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Picture break on the other side, looks like. So, Key Angus Bull Show, class 401. Will be the next one in the ring on that side, which will also be a division. We just have like seven classes, which count the divisions before we get to the Key Angus Bull selection. So, total seven classes left, I should say, in the entire show.
two really good big bulls in our last class of the day. Uh, both of them are thick and heavy muscled and they're right in terms of their right in terms of their frame size for what I like. Uh, but the bull that wins the class just has an advantage in being smoother from the side. He's he's better in that shoulder and he's longer up through his neck. And I like the way this bull's tail head's laid in him uh, much better. But just a really attractive hind leg set and maybe a little smoother muscle to go along with his rib cage uh, and just a really useful animal here that uh, uh, just a really tough pair but uh, I like the smoothness and the attractive look we get in our class winner really nice bulls up next senior bull division championship first and second of the ring from 211 and 213 here's the results on 213 first place 2836 Sheridan double vision 1D KR Land and Cattle Elder Charlay Sheridan Alberta Canada Thomas Ranch, South Dakota, Poles and Cattle, Minnesota. Second, 2835, M&M Cool Rip. Nielsen Brothers, Missouri, Bar J. Charlet, Texas. Once again, the ring, senior champion bull selection on the Charlet side, just in front of our grand champion selection, which will follow this. Then we'll get to the group classes. Both our class winners are somewhat similar in their type. As you look at them out here, uh, they're both long-bodied, heavy-muscled bulls. Uh, they're, they're smooth from the side. They're attractive in their look. They're heavy-boned. They're big-footed, and they got good testicles on them. I think uh, the decision uh, just comes, to, obviously, between these two class winners and uh, uh, the, maybe the bull that has a little more softness to him in this pair. I'll go pick him. Let's give him a quick round of applause. Uh, two really good class winners and two really good seconds out here. Senior champion bull is out of class 213. That's 2836 Sheridan Double Vision 1D. KR Landing Cattle. Elder Charlet from Canada. And Thomas Ranch, Herald, South Dakota. Poles and Cattle, Darwin, Minnesota. Your reserve comes to the same class as your champion 213, 2835 MM Cool Rep, 6054 ET. Nielsen Brothers, Missouri. Bar J. Charlet, Texas. Up next, Grand Champion Bull Selection for the Charlet. All Division Champ Reserves back in the ring. As we get to our final Grand Champion Drive here on the Charlet side. I'd like to thank the following folks for helping us today with the show. Executive Vice President Neil Orth, the staff David Hobbs, Caitlin Chisholm, Floyd, Floyd Wampler, Cody Beck, Weston Geppert, Ty Groshans, junior board members Kylie Raymer and Tara Tellefson, AICA President Larry Ludicky, board members Ty Eschenbaum, Mike Shoemaker, Dennis Metzger, Past President Bill Notke. Big thanks goes out as well to Madison Vote, 2019 Miss Charlet USA. She's from Marysville, Kansas, and attends Kansas State University. She's majoring in ag economics. Madison is very excited to serve the breed this year. Thank you to all of our ring help, all the staff, and most definitely the 2019 Miss Charlet USA Madison Vote. Thank you. Our judge for this grand champion selection, and he's been here all day working the ring with all of our classes. He's from Sulphur, Oklahoma. It's Kyle Conley, a fourth generation registered Angus breeder, graduate of Oklahoma State University. His wife, Amanda, and his two boys, Case and Jack, are here at the National Western watching Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma, our judge for this grand champion selection.
They want to do the group classes before the pictures on the Charlotte side. There'll be group classes before the pictures. Once again, as we got, uh, was said in our female show, awfully impressed with the with the quality and uh, well, just expected it. Uh, with having a few charlets, we've seen a few of these shows over the past few years, and uh, it's never easy to, to to do well at one of these shows. The, the quality is always big at, at these uh, bigger shows: uh, Denver, Louisville, American Royal, uh, Fort Worth. Uh, these cattle are always uh, right there at the top uh, with with any of the breeds. Um, just to start, the calf down here on the end, uh, just a really impressive individual. I think it's pretty obvious when he gets back out here, he matches up quality-wise with any of them we've seen today. Uh, from, from, from the ground up, his foot is really, really good. Uh, he's great testicles. This bull's balance and profile is exceptional. Uh, just uh, an impressive, impressive calf. To stand behind him, he's wide-topped. He's really thick-ended. Uh, just, just a really uh, good-looking herd bull prospect that I bet has a lot of future. Our second division, a functional kind of bull that's soft-made and smooth. He probably doesn't have the show hair that some of these have uh, out here, but sure appreciate the quality and the kind that bull is. Our senior bull calf champion, I think, sure stands out out here in terms of quality. As you study him from the profile, he's really long-fronted. He's really good in his top line. He's really laid in good at his tailhead. And he shows you good testicle development. Uh, he's a good-footed bull as well. Uh, I think that bull just uh, really stands out in terms of profile out here. He's maybe not the softest ribbed bull in the whole bunch, but a, a bull that sure shows adequate depth and plenty of shape in terms of his rib cage. Our summer champion, a uh, really smooth, really sound, really long striding bull that's really fresh in his condition. Uh, it looks like he maybe uh, just hasn't been fed as hard as a few of these, but he's sure uh, adequate in terms of his quality and his muscle. He's good testicled as well. He's a bull that almost overstrides sometimes off his rear leg and wants to maybe get his hind leg up under him at times, but uh, extremely functional in the way that bull travels uh, and is real useful in his kind. Our next division champion, uh, one of the nicest profiling bulls in the bunch in terms of his top line and his underline depth. Uh, he's a, he's a deep-sided bull that's really smooth in his shoulder. Uh, he's really good in his hip. I like that bull's uh, look and, and type from the side a lot. Uh, maybe not the, not the most overpowering in terms of muscle in this lineup, but he's sure adequate. I think there's plenty of Charlotte cows that can use a bull that's smooth muscled and not just overbearing in terms of power and muscle, but a really high quality bull there uh, that wins our second to last division. Our bull on the end, uh, probably the widest topped, widest hipped bull out here in the lineup. Uh, just impressive in terms of his thickness. A bull that uh, you sure like his head, you like his frame size, you like his foot quality. He's maybe a little lackadaisical at times when he moves. He's not really wanting to just go forward and lead very well, but a bull that you sure like the power and the, the substance in. Uh, you can tell he'll be a good breeding bull. Out here, you might want to relax that top line a little bit, uh, but a bull that's sure powerful and has some substance to him. Again, I've sure appreciated the opportunity this morning uh, to judge a Charlet cattle. Uh, we take it pretty serious as uh, we have a few Charlets and. Uh, like I said earlier, the, the junior program, I think, is by far one of the best uh, junior associations to get involved with. And I think these kids uh, that have shown out here today uh, can uh, vouch, and their parents as well can vouch for that. So I commend the association. I sure appreciate the opportunity. And let's give these breeders and exhibitors a big round of applause before we select our champion. It's been an impressive set of bulls.
Once again, those comments from our Judge Cal Conley of Silver, Oklahoma. Over on the key side, this key Angus Bull Show, class 401 in the ring with our judge, Dr. Mark Hogue of Good Hope, Illinois. Grand champion, Charlotte Bull, the 113th National Western Stock Show comes out of the Spring Calf Bull Ch Division, 2806, Boy Outlier, Boyer Show Kennel, Seville, Ohio. Start the Key Angus Bull Show out here and sure got a nice patterned, uh, attractive bull. Length of spine's good, shape's good, and this bull up high, you know, I ask at this stage in his development and maturity as he continues to become more powerful and more masculine with age, Where's that hind leg and just beef going to sit in the center part of his body? Really good up high, really good pattern. My compliments on the individual entry. Result of the King Angus Bull Show, Class 401, first place 29.30. Clausen, Mr. Clausen, Wine Gardener Show Cattle, Lima, Ohio. Up next, that was also your late junior bull calf division championship. Up next, single entry Class 402 and the early junior bull calf division. Got another individual entry here in our bull show. Real, real nice in terms of a, a sound structured bull that gets around pretty good out here. Real streamlined, long spine bull. Once again, you know, uh, maybe not the stoutest featured nor biggest hearted cattle that probably has hit the dirt in this arena or coliseum throughout the last two weeks, but I sure think good spine, good build. Reserve Grand Champion Charlotte Bull comes out of the senior calf division. 2816 J&J &J Vincent Vega 743 Sydney Johnson Orlando Oklahoma before pictures it'll be group classes for the Charlotte to round out our show we have produce a dam junior get a sire get a sire breeders herd and group of five head over in the key Angus bull show class 402 and your early junior bull calf division champion was 2932 first place in champion bulletproof Richard DeMoss, Bowie, Texas. Up next in the ring, three entries, class 405. This will be Junior Yearling Bull Division Championship as well. After this class and division will be your champion, Key Angus Bull Selection, our judge, Dr. Mark Hogue, Good Hope, Illinois.
Ski Angus uh, Key Show, uh, we said in the female side, it, man, it's hard for me to put together because you got to figure out where you want to set. Uh, you got to decide where you want to accept in terms of, uh, 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 you know, flaws that we want to improve on cattle and focus on the positives. I think it's hard. Set of three big stout bulls that we've got out here. Uh, bottom line, you watch these cattle move and you get in front of them. Uh, front end design strongly favors the gentleman here at the front end of this particular ring that's going to start this class. I think a good built bull on the front part of his body, his shape is good, his muscle's good. I think he's a little rounder and fuller in his upper rib uh, than what the bull is in second. I'd fix his hind leg. I'd like to set his pasture and change the shape to his rear foot. That's what I think makes it tough because the bull in second has the hind leg and the foot that I want uh, in a herd bull prospect. He's got a good look on the stand when you're standing here. You get in behind, in front of him, that's your call, you know, where you want to set in terms of his elbow, uh, his uh, lower shoulder and uh, front end design. To me, a little unorthodox out here, uh, uh, paddles a little too much. A bull that uh, in third, good shape, good muscle. You like the bull up high. The problem is just the farther you get away from these cattle and watch them in motion, he's the most refined of those cattle in this particular class and the most tubular in terms of his body design. So he'll close a big stout competitive class of key Angus bulls. Thank you, Dr. Hogue. Here are the results on class 405 and your junior link bull division championship. First place, 2935, HIGG Encore, 78E, Melrose Farms, winner, North Dakota. Second was a ride in your program, 2933, WSCC, Perfect Storm, 63 EET, Willow Springs Camel Company, Prairie Grove, Arkansas. Champion was 2935, reserve was 2933. Third place in that class, 405, was 2934, Trail Boss, Ventura Farm, Bath, Michigan. That'll bring us to our Key Angus Bull Champion and Reserve Champion selection. First and first and seconds back in the ring from those three divisions. Have a result for you on the Charlay side for the group class. The first group class complete was Produce of Dam. First place exhibitor, Thomas Ranch, Herald, South Dakota, with TR Miss Montella, 1572Y. Second, Cagney Effling, Highmore, South Dakota, CAG Guardian, 555C. Third, Thomas Ranch, Herald, South Dakota, TR Miss Montella, 1572Y. Fourth, Tara Tillotson, Warden, Washington, with RF Sandy 560. Fifth, Winter Springs Farm, LLC, Moleshoe, Texas, Miss Prairie Cove, 407B. Program placings in your programs are for Produce of Dam, 213, Scratch, 54, Scratch. Junior, get a sire up next. Wanted to walk the Key Angus Bulls one more time. And, uh, you know, it's interesting as we talk about intact males, uh, whether it be a show pig industry or the show cattle industry or the beef industry, uh, you know, as a, a show dad, we focus so much on the female side of things within a breed, uh, show those gilts and try to show those heifers. Uh, if we don't pay attention uh, to the sire side and the top side of the pedigrees within some of these breeds uh, with sorted heifer semen and sexed heifer semen so much, uh, we're going to going to be in a pinch uh, when it comes to animal breeding and making the next generation better. Our three division winning bulls are sure quality out here. Uh, you know, you try to put the champion and reserve together. Uh, National Western, I like big, stout, powerful bulls. Uh, I sure think this pair at the end uh, represent that. And we talked in class about a little differences in terms of design up front. Uh, but regardless, I think big picture, uh, four good bulls out here representing your breed. Champion's going to be our division winner. Reserve's going to be uh, the reserve within that big set of bulls. Let's congratulate our Key Angus bull exhibitor. Champion Key Angus bull and your reserve champion Key Angus Bull come from the same division. 
same class, 405, and the Junior League Bull. That is champion, 2935, HIGG Encore, Melrose Farms, Gwinner, North Dakota. Reserve, champion, 2933, Perfect Storm, Willow Springs Cattle Company, Prairie Grove, Arkansas. I think we're going into the Keenina Key Bull Show, single entry, class 201 coming in the ring. This is also your late junior bull calf division championship. We have two classes, which are both divisions, and then the Keenan Bull Grand Drive to wrap up our show here. Our judge, once again, Dr. Mark Hogue of Good Hope, Illinois. Graduated from BHE, University of Illinois. Got his master's at Iowa State, PhD at Michigan State. Grew up in a diversified livestock background, raising and showing livestock. Currently, he's a professor at Western Illinois Good University. Age. Once again, Dr. Mark Hogue. Good Hope, Illinois. Make the switch into the key bull show, and I th sure think a nice way to start out. Got a high quality bull out here in terms of shape and muscularity. I like that the, the turn and look he's got to his upper rib. Step back and study his balance, his symmetry, his proportions. I think he's a bull that has muscle and, muscle and feature, yet he's got some balance and symmetry to him. I think a good, good way to start with the division champion. First place in class 201 and your late junior bull calf champion, 2902. That is DAJS Unyielding, Katie Satry from Montague, Texas. Two entries coming in class 205 and your junior league bull division championship up next, then the championship, grand champion drive. Back over the group classes for Charlay. Result on Get of Sire, first place, Thomas Ranch, Herald, South Dakota with m, &M Outsider, 4003 PLD. Next group class for the Charlay. Here's a result for Breeders Herd. First place, Thomas Ranch, Herald, South Dakota. Second place, Elliot McClure, Gibson City, Illinois. Our last group class for the Charlay is group of five head. And that'll round out our show. I wanted to thank our judge once again, Kyle Conley, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Appreciate his work today. Got a really uh, a good pair here. I told the gentleman that had a uh, reserve division or a second place uh, heifer, this bull looks like a, a very similarly bred and they're out of the same sire. Uh, like I talked about his heifer, love the, the mature size that this bull represents. He's moderate, big bodied, big footed, thick ended, just really a masculine, uh, powerful kind of a beef bull out here. He weighs heavy. Uh, yet he's got the right frame size to stay in check when running on cows. Uh, the red baldy that's going to be second out here, nice silhouette, nice profiling bull. I want to intensify this bull's skeleton and then just make him a little stronger in terms of his growth columns and performance out here, individual weight per day of age uh, to compete with a big stout beef bull here at the front end of this class. Class 205 and your Judy Erling Bull Division. First place goes to 2903. That is Tracy Cattle, North Platte, Nebraska, Justin Tracy. Second, 2905. That was uh, TRAC Fetish 750E, by the way. Second place, 2905 and reserve champion FCC High Stakes. Gates Bradley Fryer, Fryer Cow Company, Stanford, Texas.
in the ring will be the champion Keating a Bull selection with our judge, Dr. Mark Hogue of Good Hope, Illinois. That'll wrap up our key show after this selection. Back over the Charlet side to wrap up there, the group of five head. First place, Winter Springs Farm, LLC, Moleshoe, Texas. Wraps up the Charlet show. Coming up at 1 o'clock is the start time for the next set of shows here in the Stadium Arena. It'll be the National Shorthorn Female Show and the Open Shorthorn Bull Show. Here in our T-Bull Show, the three representatives that comprise our our breed, uh, uh, good good kinds of bulls, and I think it's close. You look at the calf uh, that wins the first division, and I like his quality and body shape, a well-presented bull. You know, I, I try to, to predict and put a little future in what he's going to do, study the rear size and shape to his heel and foot and pasture. And, you know, I, I'd like to just uh, correct that a shade, but the rest of him is really, really good. Look at our big bull out here, and on the stand, uh, I think, you know, he's the dominant individual. Uh, love his feet, love his strength, and love his muscularity in motion today. He doesn't handle this surface uh, maybe the best out of, out of his rear ankle and pasture, uh, but yet I still think his, his foot size and shape is appropriate. And so good pair of bulls, good clean sheath, got a, sec a reserve division down here, got some lines and look to him. Uh, uh, my compliments to all three beaters that have committed to bring bull uh, to the National Western. I think as we talked about in the Kianga show, it's hard to beat those big, stout, intimidating beef bulls at the at the National Western. We're going to use the big bull for champion. We're going to use the little bull for reserve. Let's give them all a nice round of applause as we bring your Kianga show to a close. Champion Keenan Bull comes out of Class 205 in the Junior League Bull Division, the 2903 track fetish. 750E, Tracy Cannell, Wellfleet, Nebraska. And the reserve champion comes out of Class 2902, late Junior Bull Calf Division. That is DAJS Unyielding 924, Katie Satry, Montague, Texas. That'll wrap up our shows in here for right now. We'll hit the pause button, and we'll come back with the Shorthorn Show at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Thanks to our judge once again, Dr. Mark Hogue. Appreciate working with you again this year. Thanks to all our exhibitors on both sides of the arena.
your attention, please, in the state of Marina and the barn. If we have any vehicles parked out the West Thai area, out the west side of the state of Marina, anybody that's parked out there, you need to move your vehicles immediately. Please move your vehicles immediately, immediately if you're parked on the west side of the state of Marina, out by the Thai area. Thank you.